happening. Cr- oh, it's getting bad, crazy. It's happening. Here. I'm going. I'm, I'm doing it. My bad. It's it was happening. my week. I had a hard on. So sorry. Oh, <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Pictures, pictures are didn't let happen, dog. My it. bad. Okay. <laughs> well, we're back. We're back. We're locked. Hold in. on. Hold on. Two seconds. Two seconds. No, go for it. Go for it. I don't know where. Are you live going? already? You li- both of you guys live already? I'm up. Uh, yeah, I'm up. I'm up and running. Yeah, I've been up for. Oh shit, that was weird. I've been up for like half an hour. Um, I didn't get a notification that you went live. Don't got the noties on. Don't I do have them on. That's the crazy part about it. Exposing himself. No, 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 no. Oh. I do have his notifications on. That's why. That's why it's so weird to me. That's why it's odd. That's why I'm not amused at the at this current moment. Oh, see, that's your noty right there. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh shit! And I said it twice. Okay, um, go ahead. Hit us with the intro zero since you know you hot and ready, baby. Listen, what's up, buddy? Everybody, see, I fucked up. It was smooth the first time. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Listen, dude. thank you so much for being here, everybody, in everybody's community. This is the usual Tuesdays. Uh, typically, we go, uh, you know, one for one each week on a, on a topic. Today, my topic. Um, <laughs> Hey, let me see your dick though before you start. Long Listen, God, I got two questions. One is a more lighthearted ish, more like debate ish t- uh, question, and then the other's a little bit of a darker one, which is the title of this whole thing. Um, at least on my stream, but you guys can kind of decide what we want. We've been, we've been kind of dark recently. You guys can decide which one you'd rather go with, or if you want to do uh, a is the well, I want to do both. Is the lighthearted one similar to the serious one? No, 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 no. They're they're actually so unrelated. It's like, can you find a way to mesh them together? What is the title no. of, the, of the podcast? I'm <laughs> muted. Hold on, real quick. You were muted for a second. Oh, well, I don't, no, know. I don't no, know. No, no, somebody on my. They're telling me I'm muted over here. Am I good now, chat? Jordan, thank you again for the fifty, brother. I appreciate that. What's up? Um, um, could I mesh the two? Oh, and we are a day early uh, because of zero, guys. Just want to let you guys know that. Oh yeah, yeah. We are the I usual. Was... We are the usual Tuesdays, but sometimes <clears throat> we do it on Wednesdays, and this is our first Monday. Actually, before you start, yeah, yeah. Before you start, bro, can we give ourselves a round of applause real fast? This is fucking episode ten. Ten. Oh yeah, crazy. Holy shit. That's crazy. Episode 10, baby. Um, I will crazy. not lie. I will not lie. I did not anticipate the consistency. I won't it was, lie. It's, it's um, been good. The consistency, not only like scheduling wise, because, you know, it's hard to get two people on the cord to meet up a certain day, a certain time. But then three people, I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. And then it was like, what are these conversations going to look like? Like, I don't know. I don't know. But it's been phenomenal, guys. So Bro, congratulations been... to us all. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, technically, it's 12 weeks, right? Technically. But this is mm-hmm. like numbered 10 of the usual Tuesdays that we've been doing this. And it's crazy to think that we're over two and a half months of doing this. And like, you know, you know, Corpse and I already knew each other. Uh and zero and i already knew each other but the fact that like y'all didn't know each other and now the three of us are just getting to know each other like this and it's just it's cool it's like we get to know we get to like learn and love each other a little bit more and our communities get to see how each of us interact with each other it's just it's just a good time bro i i look forward to my week i look forward to this in my week and it is like i can't wait to hear what what you know corpse comes up with i can't wait to hear what zero comes up with and the fact that we did it a day early I was like sitting at dinner at my dad's house and I was like, damn, I can't wait. Cause I tried to get it out of you last night, bro. I was like, what, what's the topic about? And you wouldn't drop it for us. So no, nah, you, know, you held it a secret. So you know what? I, I mean, I'm good with whatever. If corpse is good with whatever, I'm good with whatever. But it's so I'm gonna leave it on your court, bro. Do you want to start lighthearted or do you want to end lighthearted? You know, it's it's really up to you. Let me do what I think is probably gonna be the best way is to start lighthearted and then we'll end on the on the more serious. But first, I want to ask, at the end of the episode last week, Corpse had a thing that he wanted to say. Do you want to say that? Oh, yeah, know, yeah that bro. Was, you said you were going to release some info, but you couldn't until this week. Damn, Zero yeah. held it to you, bro. 
I was like, I was like, damn, I gotta hold this. I, I want to, cause I want to know. As a viewer last week, I was like, no, nah, I gotta know. <clears throat> um. Um. I'm moving to North Carolina. Oh, what? What the fuck? It's I'm official. Moving. It's official. I may be potentially living in Florida for a little bit, um, but I will be living in North Carolina. Damn. Yo, con- is that a congrats? Or are we? What are we? What, yeah, are we, we sad. Uh, there's more. There's more. But some of this, I need to wait for paperwork to come through. Um, but yeah, so a part of my family, I don't want to say too much. Too much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. a part of my family is going to be moving. And then, so for me, what does California have for me mm. um, is, is the next question. And um, where I could like follow some of my family to where they're at and blah, blah, blah. Like, nah, nah. I mean, luckily, North Carolina will be close enough. Um, but I'm going to go there to regroup with family and kind of look at the next 10 years because I just turned 30. You know what I mean? And so look at the next 10 years as what do I do to build the 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 necessary, you know, skill set, the necessary community, the necessary, you know, the friends that I made in high school got me through my 20s. Now, the friends that I made in my 20s are going to help me get through my 30s. And then the friends that I make and keep during my 30s will make help. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So is this like within the next month or so or is it by the end of the year? Um, November. Okay, so we still got some time to figure out scheduling for this and all other shit, right? Because we're gonna keep it going, bro. That's literally what I was thinking. I was like, bro, fuck, how's this gonna work? Time oh difference is we have to keep this. The biggest, the biggest change will be maybe a day or the time itself. Um, I've already kind of, dude. I like it. This seriously clicked through my head when I was like making this decision. Um, and I was like, you know what? Like time differences and shit doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Like it could be, it's figure outable. So if something that small is coming along, like, oh, we're just in different time zones now, you know, I'll fucking figure it out, dude. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But yeah, man, going to North Carolina, going to be in North Carolina. Hey, well, uh, hey, congrats, bro. I'm glad that the move is, it sounds like the move is uh, more beneficial than not. So congrats, brother. I, I, I look forward to hearing more about this throughout the journey before you get there and i know that we're gonna we'll probably touch on it uh in in our group chat but i'm sure that you know like some of the listeners will will want to hear about what's going on too so i'm ha- i'm happy for you bro i I, you. I i definitely want to know more details but we'll, we'll save it for later we'll save it for a private conversation um <laughs> yeah yeah but right, i do want to say yeah. i do i do want to say that there is um there is some stuff we'll chat about um and i don't know if people really noticed but i haven't been myself these last few weeks um and if people who know me know i don't like cry like that but the fact that i've been so emotional is just been like there's just been a lot of shit piling up piling piling hey i mean there's a video on youtube of you crying now so yeah that's just on wax (laughs) (laughs) but people wonder why like when i think of elijah like it's making me break down like yeah i had already made this decision to move to north carolina before that podcast Mm-hmm. So this is some information I've been sitting on for a while now, for mm-hmm. about, a, about about close to close to a month. It was like April. It was right after Sydney's birthday. So like April, like 20th or something is when um when I made that choice. For sure. For sure. So thank, right, you well, guys, I, hey, thank you yeah, guys man. for being here for me, man. I look forward to talking about it more and hearing more about it for sure. For sure. All right, Zero. It's on you, baby. Wait, I first, want- I, I want to... Ask, maybe I should have asked this. It's kind of fucked now. Um, do you mind that I made that into a clip? Into the like us crying, both of us crying. Oh, you, I don't even think Corpse knows, bro. <clears throat> no, I've seen it. I've oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't did care. You? Nah, nah, I don't care about okay, okay, okay. anything, was... dude. Anything that happens on this podcast, I don't give a fuck. Like, bro, I smoke weed on this thing. You think I care <laughs> people seeing me cry, bro? Well, I don't <laughs> like, know, bro. I was like, <laughs> fuck. I don't know. I think I, I even said it to save. I was like, bro, did, I don't know. Should I like ask? I don't know. And like, I, you know what I told him? I was like, it's already on the internet, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna fucking give a fuck, yeah. anyways. It's already I, on the fucking internet. The reason, uh, especially the, um, the reason. The reason I wanted to keep it light first is because I feel like we're going to get through this relatively pretty quickly. Um, 
maybe not maybe i'm wrong and maybe we don't do the second part at all but uh the second part i'm really interested in because when i was listening to the podcast yesterday the the question popped into my head i thought it was an interesting question so the first one is is there ever a situation where it's okay to be friends with your ex yes okay okay absolutely absolutely i see corpus over there there. i want to beat this bitch's ass because y'all know okay i I gotta open up a can of worms okay my bad i for sure thought it was gonna say no you thought Um, i was gonna say no i thought you were gonna say no for sure that's why i was like oh it's gonna go quick bro i'm friends with a lot of my exes that i mean i wouldn't say friends like of course, I'm friends with my son's mom. Her and I have a great yeah, course, yeah. of course. But yeah. I'm not, well, I mean, we have to be cordial. But her, like, that's my actual friend. You know what I mean? Like, she's my friend. But she was my friend before we got together. Um, let me. I'm hold on. Let me think. I wouldn't. I mean, I mean I'm cool with my exes. Like, I don't have. I'm, hold anything I'm saying them. friends. I'm saying friends. Not cool. Not acquaintance. Like you're so friends on the level where y'all would hang out. Hang, like, out. hang out. The question so is: Is it ever okay? Is, is it is it ever is it okay like is it okay uh to be do you think if a girl entered your life and she was like oh by the way i'm friends with an ex we were together for a year let's say um but we're homies like we're really cool we ended up super amicably uh we're really cool i hope i hope you don't mind is that okay hmm. <laughs> i do i do <laughs> I knew it was a no. I knew it's like a weird. It's like a weird. I don't think it's a no, though. I don't think it's a no. I don't think it's a no. I I'm hesitant to say yes, but I don't think it's a no. Okay. Because I gotta look at it from my perspective, right? If there's ever a young lady that I'm chatting with, I have to be like, "Yo, I'm friends with my son's mom. Like, we're not just cool because of like we have a kid together, but like she's genuinely my friend, and I chat with her and." You know, even like when we go out and do stuff with with Peanut, you know, like she's genuinely my friend. So if if somebody told me that, I mean, I guess it just really depends on the the dynamic. And like, I would have to meet the guy f- for sure. But here, okay, so here, I'll I'll openly chat about this. I'll openly chat sure. about this. Okay, okay. My last relationship actually ended because of this. Mm. And. <laughs> why so here's here's the story okay so uh ex-girlfriend super cool chick I, she was fucking badass i i have nothing but good things to say about her right um we got like into our relationship deep into our relationship and she had decided that she wanted to befriend her ex-boyfriend again which Ooh. similar situation s- similar situation uh where you know they were friends before they started dating they realized their relationship didn't work they were more friends than not blah 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 blah. Mm. so she comes to me and she's like hey i like i've been thinking about messaging him i don't have any friends she she really didn't have any friends i felt i felt kind of bad about that and she was like i'm i genuinely miss his friendship this that and the other so i was like at first i was like hell nah like what the how the fuck does that sound to me you Mm -hmm. know like uh, but I thought about it and I was like, you know, it's it's kind of unfair because my ex is my friend for me not to be like, oh, cool, go ahead, shoot, your, go, go for it. Um, so she re- he reached out or she reached out. One of them reached out and uh, it kind of like started snowballing after that. And there was like things that were said that I was not a fan of. Um, mm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, cut that shit off. Like, this is I'm not with this. And, you know. Uh, the friendship was more important than the relationship. So, you know, that it just ended like that. So uh, it just, I I think it just really depends on the dynamic. It it was just weird because it had happened into the relationship. You know what I mean? It it made me feel some type of way like, oh shit, am I not, am I not doing what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing because you want to go befriend your ex again. Um, But after reflection and sitting back and thinking about it, it's like you know, sometimes people just want their friends back, and I I gotta respect that, you know. Well, the thing is though, bro, when it comes to me in relationships now, is I will not date a friend. Like my girlfriends that I've dated recently, like even Sydney, they're barely my friend, right? Like barely to the sense where it's like 
if you're a genuinely a friend, friends are for friendship. They're not for fucking dating. You feel me? And I have to make serious distinctions about that. You know, like, and it's, it's what's made it hard for me to date. Like, bro, when I talk to some people, they've dated like 10, 15 people in the past, like five, six years Damn. where me in the past eight years, I've dated three people. Mm -hmm. You get me? And it's not, mm -hmm. it's not like I have, to, obviously, like, I don't pick, pick the best quality of fucking people, like, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I'm just being honest, like, let's just, let's just I call mean, a spade, you know? Like, they call me a whore, I want a whore too, you know? <laughs> Whatever, okay, I'm a fucking Power Ranger for inner city kids, okay, so let's just check this out, all right? For me, means. like, if I would have heard that shit, if I would have, I would have been like, no, absolutely not. It's like, why are y'all rekindling the friendship when you're in a relationship with me? Right, what are you like, talking about from my perspective? Yeah, yeah. from what, what was going I, on I actually you. agree. Hell, uh, like, 100%. If, if that would have been me, I'd have been like, absolutely not. Like, I was trying to be the good guy, bro. I was trying to love is love, baby. I was trying to, you know, be the good guy and be understanding. And it just, it low key, it like backfired in my face. Hey, you know what? You know what? Be a good man, don't be a nice guy. No, nah, but that. I understand. I feel like I understand your like you're saying she didn't have friends, you're friends with your your you know ex but this is okay but this is a thing though right so i kind of get I'm, it i'm assuming you're talking about peanuts mom right? no girlfriend after her no 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 i'm saying but but you're oh, still friends with my ex oh yeah okay. yeah yeah and that was and that was like even her other friends were like yo like that's his son's mom and she can't was, complain about it was that. like unacceptable yeah. because it she was like by default that. it was like by default she can't complain about that because she went into the relationship knowing that she went in like, hey, I have a healthy relationship with her. Like we and I never did anything to I, I mean, I feel like I never did anything to be like, I'm I choose you over her. Like, yeah, I, I'm you're spending right. my time with you, girl. I'm I mean, at the, <laughs> end, at the end of the day, you're, you're not you're, fucking you're not you're fucking her. You're fucking her. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So my Back. loyalties are over here. Like, obviously, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not obvious enough sometimes, bro. You know <laughs> it's you know not what? obvious enough. Sometimes, hey, bro, bro. <laughs> some people don't want to see that. That's the thing. That's my thing, bro. Like, Boom. some motherfuckers don't want to see. You know what we're doing? Do you know what we're doing right now? Do what? what we're doing? Maury Povich? No, we're doing the, the thing where girls go out, get brunch, and have like mimosas. And you're like, yes, bitch. She <laughs> <laughs> fucking a hoe. Period. Yeah. Queen. <laughs> Period. Fuck Queen. that guy. You fucking tell him. That's what we're doing to I each other right fucking now. We're like, bro, she just Hype me, me up. Hype fucking. me up right this now. This is barbershop like, talk right yeah. here. Tell me I'm a good looking guy and I can get you're any girl. You're a good looking guy, dude. You can have any girl you want, bro. You can get any bitch you want, bro. They don't even know what's coming to him. Can I get any dude I want to? Yes, you yeah, could if you wanted to. Oh, right, I could. Uh, Damn, Skippy. See, and so this is my thing, right? So I think uh, getting in, like, if, like, I get super nervous when people ask me, like, oh, are you going to start dating soon? It's like, like, I don't want to talk about that. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to get into that because it just makes me nervous because now I feel that a, I feel that a non-negotiable for me is to be able to have conversation around these things. Right. Like if I can't say if I can't look at you and say, hey, you got something going on with this guy. You know, what I mean, like, is there something that I need to know about right here? And if you cannot look at me and answer honestly and not be defensive, you know what I mean? To my to my accusation. I can't fuck with you. Right. Because it's like if someone's going to date me, they're going to know I'm a dad off rip. Right. And being a dad, there's certain responsibilities and certain people I got to talk to. I have to. Right. So if you feel the need before you get serious with me that you might want to rekindle some friendships with some old girlfriends or old boyfriends just for their company and their conversation, let's get that established before we get established. Mm, because if because if you set up that friendship and you still wander back to me, then then it's me. Then I have the confidence to say, OK, she's choosing me over these people. You right? know what's like, funny that that. OK, so I, a lot of people don't know this. And I can't even believe that I'm about to say this on the internet. Um, but so that yeah. girlfriend that I'm talking about, it, I we wound up going to couples therapy. It was something that she suggested a long time in the relationship, and I was like, "Fuck no, we're not doing this." Relationship was kind of falling apart. I was like, "Fuck it, let's go. To, let's go to therapy. We'll do what the fuck you want to do. Go to therapy." I was like, "I'll go." Um, and that was it. Was actually brought up in therapy uh, about her reaching out to her ex, bro. I shit you not. The therapist was like, "Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that." 
therapist was like, no, no. Yeah, no, no. wait, wait, wait. I, uh, it was like this old white lady. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of agree with him on this part. Like, yeah, we probably should. Yeah. Like on That's no good. level, on no level do I think that it's cool when you're in a new relationship that you're maintaining a relationship with an ex, unless you guys have kids, right? Like, because because of kids, any you- relationship at all, like not even like uh, one of those like, hey, how you doing? How's life been? Type of thing. Oh, I see you have kids now. How was the wedding? That's like I feel like those types of messages though are like so far and few in between that it's like, oh look, he said like hi. And then, like two years later, it's like, oh, he said Merry Christmas, whatever. I'm so I'm so weird with it because it's like those little messages and those little posts are their ends sometimes. That's the way that they think that they can wiggle in and try to like. He only says that because he knows from experience. That's why I know from experience, bro. (laughs) Oh, I've done it. He said, "I was gonna say he sent out one of them Merry Christmas guy." Are are you sending Christmas cards? (laughs) Absolutely, bro. I've not only seen it done, I've done it. Oh, right? Like, I'm that guy, bro. Hey, hi, Jax. Oh, hey, good job on that. Congratulations. You worked so hard. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, my God. You're going like, to like and a retweet. Bro. And a fucking oh, all of that, cool. baby. Like, you feel me? Bro, like, come on. Like, st- like, like, stop. Like, let's, again, let's talk like fucking adults here. You know what I mean? Like, these apps and these, all these DMs, all this shit, it was all made for people to build relationships. So you're so, saying you're saying no to if you're if you're if a girl that you're pursuing has a f- ex that's a friend you're you're a hard no. It depends on what level that friend's at. With no kid. If it depends on what level that friend's at. They go to brunch together. I feel like brunch is safer than dinner. What? Why? Why? No. No. <laughs> who, who who goes to brunch and fuck? Who alone? Fuck goes to brunch alone? Th- those two alone? Um. Uh, let's say there's two more people with them. Uh, I'm a little more comfortable with that. If they go alone, yeah, the more people, it. the more people, it's fine. The more the people, okay. So let me ask. You, okay, let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this. Say I don't you know about are, next, actually. Say you are into the relationship, right? And you you love your girl, you trust her, and she's like, "Babe, I'm I'm gonna go out with so and so." Are you saying? Are you saying okay? Wait, is that a new shirt? Who are you talking to? Oh. Is that a new shirt? <laughs> That's actually sick. I like that shirt. Uh, how come I've never seen that? <laughs> let me get a, let me get a jacket. Hold on. Corpsecollection.com. Good. I, like <laughs> I have not seen. My bad. I completely just fucking sidetracked. Um, but if they you're into the relationship, you trust her. You expect her to trust you. Mm-hmm. And she's like, babe, I'm gonna go to lunch with so and so. Mm-hmm. You you trust me, mm-hmm. and she goes. Is it going to be an issue? Mm-hmm. Wait, what? <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely, really? absolutely. It's about to be an issue. Okay, so okay, what if she says, "Oh, I ran into so and so while I was out at brunch, and uh, he sat down and he ordered, the and he table joined us. A, he joined us, ordered some drinks for us, and that's you know fine. we chatted. That one's that's better because there's more people around. That's fine. Not only because that, because there wasn't a conversation, a private conversation between the two of, hey, let's meet up at, at this place at this well, time. What if that's the loose end where he's like, where he's like, hey, brunch was sick. Uh, thanks for, you know, letting me stick around. It was nice catching up. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah I don't. Yeah, I don't babe, he, he just all he did was message me and say, thanks for like no. allowing me to sit with you. No, 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 honey. So it's hard. Honey. No. First off, first off, second off. Second off, I don't the air of possibility is what concerns me, right? In North Carolina, bro, we have a thing, right? When two dudes are like starting to challenge each other, it's like there's nothing but air and opportunity. Do something, right? Ain't nothing but air and opportunity in between us, playa. Right. So let's put air and opportunity between me and this young lady, right? And let's say I do take a move. Maybe Wait, I what? do may, let's just say me and this girl, right? She's got her boyfriend. We he's saying he's the ex. He's saying I'm, he's the ex. I'm the other. Oh. I'm, this, I'm the other man. Okay. Right? I was like, so I pay. I make my pass at her, and let's say she denies. But now there's a story she has to go and tell her boyfriend about me. Now, now I'm now I'm going to become an issue, right? So for me, if my girl's going out to go have a date like that, like a little one on one, it's like, honey, you're just putting too much opportunity in there. There's just wait, too wait, much wait, opportunity. Wait. Okay, so are you saying that you don't let your girl go to the club? 
No, you can go to the club. Go with your isn't, girls. Isn't there the same amount of opportunity there? No, but there's not like a deliberate. It's there, yeah, there's like not a there's the not a seeking like a out. It, that like, is extremely yeah. deliberate. What the fuck do people go to the club for? Oh, hey, 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 hey. I was just I was just at the bar. And you know what kind of da- you know what kind of dancing, dancing happens? Do you know what it kind does. of dancing happens at the club? It does, but I've Bro. also seen I've seen plenty of girls shoot guys down. That's where I gotta trust her. That's if she because mm. if she can't you police can her that. own shit, if she can't police her I own shit. Thing. Then it's like I can't be like. Then what? Then I'm not the police. I ain't your fucking daddy. I don't need to be record, hovering over devil, your shoulder, no matter where the fuck you go. Like you know what I mean? I'm not gonna tell any girl she can't go to the club. Just oh, okay. I was like, I was like, wait a minute. I feel <laughs> For like, the record, it was just well, I, now, it was, yeah. Now you dancing up on some dude. Now now we're gonna have a fucking issue. We're about to have a real fucking <laughs> issue nope. because I I promise you, some girl wha- fucking swinging her wagon on me is about to be a fucking issue. And I don't care what nobody says. No, it wasn't. I know he's dancing. No, shut up. It's just up. dancing, bro. You you're know what I mean? For the for the <laughs> <laughs> you're, sound, you're trying to sound like a proud, independent motherfucker for the internet. But let me tell you something, honey. I spit real facts here, and I put it down real true. I've had and my dick. All the girls <laughs> asked me for it. Ain't just dancing. It ain't just dancing. It ain't just because then they start, you know, they start breathing heavy and shit. Next thing, you're like kind of moving them around, and they're all leaning into you. Like, come, come on. We know what this is. We know what it. Is. Moving them around and stop. Step back is standing kind of close. Feel a little poke coming, coming through. Hey, <laughs> um, you. Uh, so, hey, I'm trying to tell you, people don't. They did not know what those lyrics were about. They Fuck are no, freaking they on each other, and he is catching a boner. Yep. Literally. Yep. You're too close. <laughs> Bro, and I remember two dancing. Look at, look at, look at, David, David has no idea what song we're talking uh, about at all. Bro, I remember. I bet you he knows cool. why you always lying. Uh, I do know that. <laughs> that's where that came from. Yeah, yeah that's where <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, was serious. Man, hey, you re- you reached from the other side. You use the right hand for the for the left cheek. Yeah, bro, you got to go from. Oh, hey, we're more, we're more, in com- we're more in com- We got more in common. <laughs> That's the swim move, boy. You know what I'm saying? Hit him with the X, bro. You know, like the crisscross uh, applesauce. Uh, 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 boy, I love RD, that shit. RD, it was your question. So, what's your stance on it, bro? Um, your current girl right now, you love her to death. Oh, you guys been together it. for a long time. Yeah. X pops up, and she's like, you know what? We were really good friends. Our relationship ended well. And uh, you know, I, I, he went, he asked me to lunch. I, I, he knows about you. He knows you're my boyfriend. I'm gonna go to lunch with him. What's the word? Mm, yeah. So I won't put her her personal stuff out, obviously. But well, that's what I'm saying hypothetically. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, so because I'm trying to think the the ex boyfriend that I know that she has. No, no, no. no. Um, Get personal experiences out of here. Okay, so Just you're talking NX, about like NX, we NX, NX. Okay, okay, okay. And next, we ended but, amicably. We amicably ended on a good with note. Show. Yep, we're good. We ended. He asked me out for lunch. Uh, you know, he was a good friend of mine. I'm going to lunch with him. <laughs> oh, it's like she's just letting me know. Well, yeah. What did she have to do? Ask you? Yeah. The fuck for, are you her parent? For, for something like that, yes. I would yeah. hope that between me she's and her, a grown she's ass like, woman. I'm on her side. Hey, no, I know no, you're listening no. right now. I'm on your side, girl. You don't have to ask this man for shit. No, no, no she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't have to. No, 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 she doesn't have to ask me for like to go out or like whatever. She, I, I feel like we've come to a position that I feel like at this point, you know that what you're doing, it, the reason you're telling me is because it might be a little uh, iffy. So I feel like you should come to me and be like, hey, might make you feel uncomfortable. I don't know how you feel. What do you feel about this? You know, so I would imagine she's asking me. So I'd, I'd probably be like, that makes me feel hella comfortable. I, I like, I'd rather you not. Um, but, she gets, no, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'd rather you not. End of story. There's so not a says, but. What if she says, I want to? Uh, I'd be like, well, why do you want to? Because like, you didn't tell her no, you just said, I'd rather you not, right? Like, well, hopefully she respects the, the wish enough to be like, all right, I won't go. But like for me, it's like a like no, I don't know. I feel like that's not that's not uh I don't know. That's like what just why? Why would you I don't know, why would you go? Now she was like mm, now she was like, Oh, a bunch of friends are going to brunch. One of my friends is really close friends with my ex. He he might be there. That's a different story. I'm like, all right, your plans seem to be with all your friends. Um, it's not my favorite thing in the world that he's gonna be there, but you know, whatever. I like 
I think you're, you know, I trust you. You guys are going to have fun. You're going to do whatever. Uh, I trust you. So I, I don't think anything's going to happen. Just let me know what's good. You know, one I thing like- that none of us have said, hmm. I'm going with you. No. No, I'm not going with you. No, fuck that. <laughs> That's now, just weird. I just feel weird. Now, what Damo said is pretty much how I sound. It's yeah. like, hey, you know I don't like this. If you're going to do it, if you really want to go, go. Right? I'm going to be pissed the fuck off. <laughs> but go. Knock yourself out. Right? Because you're going to do it regardless. I look at it like this. You're going to do it regardless. I'm going to tell you how I feel. You're going to do what you want regardless. It's going to teach me what I can do to you first. And then second off, it also shows me how much you respect how I'm feeling, the boundaries I'm trying to set, right? Cool, right? Cool. That's like on a one-on-one. Again. That's like on a one-on-one. If you're in a group, it's like, yeah, go. Like you're in a group, you know what I mean? But my my thing that I do ask, I, I will ask, do you think that I need to be there? Like, is this, is this why you're asking me? You think I need to be there? Or you're just wanting to make sure I'm okay? If it's if you're making sure I'm okay, it's fine. If you're asking me if, if you want me to be there, like if that's what you're trying to tell me, I'll be there. What time? Like what time? Like we'll be there. Maybe you don't trust him, you know, but you want to well, be. She able didn't to be trust with him. You. If she didn't trust him, I don't think she'd be asking to go to dinner or whatever lunch or whatever. Or like a group. But I'm saying like in a group, like in a group setting. Like if she's like, oh, he's going to be there, but I don't want you to be mad. It's like no, it's fine. Like go. Like you're in a group. Right. Like, because to me, with the group setting, I'm more comfortable because then I can weed out more people if something happens. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if they do do something and I find out, then I know I can't trust none of you. So good riddance. Right. Mm. And instead of having fakes in my circle. You know what I mean? So it's like killing two birds with one stone, bro. I know I can't fuck with her. I know I really can't fuck with you, dog. And you five motherfuckers who supposedly love me. Like, nah. This, like, goes, back, this goes back to that red flag conversation that we were having that one night, huh? Mm-hmm. 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 That's interesting. Damn, you got the Crocs on? Damn. The gray shorts, man. And the gray oh. shorts? Oh, Ooh, dick. I damn. That oh, dick, man. man. <laughs> Oh my Stop. god! That motherfucker playing with playing. me. I'm <laughs> sorry, I came with the fucking energy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> where, uh, where? So let me ask you: this. Where, where does this question come from? Um, bro, I'm so sorry. My my fucking levels keep going down. Um, where did this? Where does <clears throat> something happen? Hmm. Not between like me and my girlfriend or anything. I forgot what exactly like prompted this, but I was like, yeah, I forgive me, forgive me. Again. Say. What, what was your girlfriend's name again? Forgive me. I apologize. I met her, her one time. Her name is uh her name is Jalissa. Jalissa GG. Uh okay. Jalissa in the motherfucking house. <laughs> yeah, Jalissa in the house. She you she's she's like the straight moderator for our shit, bro. She is, she's Dude, wild. she is a fucking fact checker for the she, she's the first fact checker for the fucking usual Tuesdays, bro. She she legit yep. watches every minute of every episode, tells Damo like why do you keep fighting with that fucking beaner? Uh you Whoa. Know, like, no. she does not say that. <laughs> she does not say that. For the record, oh she does not God. say that, okay? Okay, actually, oh I know it's your week, dog. I know it's your week, and I apologize, but I just said I just said that that racial slur. And I, I've actually, can I bring something up, if you guys yeah. don't mind? Because it's still fresh in my mind. I literally just had this conversation. And I'm sorry to bring this up, but it, it, it like, really irritated me. So uh, I'm not going to say who this person is, uh, but they 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 stand very tall on their culture let's just say um and the the theory that your race is your culture and that uh if you don't grow up a certain way because of this because of said race um that you're not fully into the culture if that makes sense so the argument tonight uh was that because i'm mexican my father is is full mexican my my, my mother is part white um, so I, the argument was that I grew up, uh, I grew up privileged because my mother was white and I'm, I'm considered white. 
and so go ahead go ahead i was just gonna ask is the is the the reason you don't want to say is it uh, like personal to you I don't or is it fuck, actually it's my sister-in-law my sister-in-law oh, damn oh, okay <laughs> yeah. I, I just thought about it nobody knows who my like people don't really know who my sister-in-law is that listen to this so uh but you know it's all in good love like it's i love her i love her to death she's she's a great woman um uh, but she's very she's very hung up on the culture side of things and because her both her parents are mexican she considers herself more uh culturally mexican than i do uh, mind you again my father is full mexican we go to, we go to mexico every once in a while we go hunting and sleep in sh- like shit in holes and do all that type of shit uh, so do you so uh, so i asked her the conversation was i asked her I said how do you think that i grew up privileged and you know because white white privilege is like the thing these days that everybody wants to point out um and she was like yeah well you know you grew up in a household that's mexican and a household that's white and your mother and this were you know middle class people but you know i i i, I was just kind of like my mother worked two jobs my father worked two jobs i had to go to school in a different area where my family was all mexican and i had to worry about motherfuckers getting deported and when i did live with my mother because my mother and father were separated like we her myself and my brother lived in somebody else's apartment all in one room where we literally all shared a space uh like it doesn't sound very privileged to me that don't sound privileged at all to me so it was just interesting like do you guys think that do you th- so basically my question is do you think that there's a certain percentage of a culture that you can be? Hmm. I want to say like reflexively without giving it much thought like my reflex says yes. Um because I'm Mexican by all blood but I feel like culturally I'm not like at all. Um I guess you like don't I'm practice maybe, anything in the culture. I'm in the like I eat the food, which is great. Um, I, I have family. I speak Spanish and stuff like that. Um, but well, you I, speak I, I Spanish. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, feel, I feel like I, I don't know how much of a claim I have to, uh, to, to be Mexican or like to the Mexican culture. Um, I can appreciate it. I feel like it's it's very cool. It's very um, there's so many different cool aspects to it. But uh, I don't know if I necessarily would ever say like like uh, like go go to Mexico and be like I'm Mexican. Like that's where I'm. That's who I am. You know, and I'd be like, what the fuck, dog? You have like you come from America. You were born there. You live there. You like went to American schools. Like I don't know. I just don't feel like I'm very connected to it in like a like a to my core type of thing. Hmm. Um, it's a weird. It's a very um. Me and my sister were actually talking about this earlier today, um, and I think it's a very crab in the bucket mindset, right? Where it's like, why, why is there a percentage being thrown on this? Because I don't like. Okay, so let's take for you for example, Cisco. There's some reason that people are calling you uncultured or privileged because you had a certain life. Right. Well, no, no, no. Well, th- it was thrown out because of my because of my mixed race, not yeah. because of my lifestyle. It was thrown out because of my mixed race. Well, yeah, you got a mixed. You have a mixed race, like you're yeah. mixed race. So you have you have a certain life, like life and lifestyle, right? Like you're going to be exposed not only to Mexican cultures. Yeah, like I watched, you know, Sepien, and I watched Friends. You know, Days of Our Lives. I listen to fucking rap music and corridos, and I listen to country, like. I look at it like this, right? So you could have a family, right? Let's say you have a black and white family down the middle, 50-50. This, the, the wife is black and she's from Madagascar and the, the husband is from up, upstate New York, right? And they have this beautiful family and this, these kids could look absolutely white, right? Just pale, pale as it comes. The dad, right? People, so immediately, immediately, people are already going to associate white privilege with these kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Regardless of what this dad may do for a job, regardless of how he met the mother or how the mother got to America or how he got to Africa. So there's already a fat assumption being made simply by the birth that these children took. They did not choose who their parents were. 
right? So I think to proclaim privilege just because of the birth you take is fucking weird. It's yeah, yeah, but I think I think that that example is opposite though. I think it would be I think if you if they came out darker and not white, like that's where the argument that's where my argument was like conf- I was confused. And okay, but so so I am take white it on the opposite, but take yeah, it but, the but like. Do, like, do I look white at all? You know what I mean? Like, I, mm-hmm. I don't see where I don't see where I would. Dude, I thought your name was Kevin. Okay, that's see, what that's I'm saying. Like, I don't I don't see where where that the initial take of white privilege <laughs> because I don't have a white name. I don't have I like I don't have white skin. I speak Spanish. Like, I I don't see where that initial thought of like, oh yeah, you're privileged because you're white, could step in in that at that situation. So for you, right? So for, like, let's say for you, right? Or even Demo. Where it's like, you know, I don't know that much Spanish or, oh, you know, I never lived in Mexico or you have like some kind of weird shit like that. That, that, is, that does not make you any less Mexican because you didn't go through a Mexican struggle or you didn't I, come from the Mexican homeland. I agree. You, I mean, it does make him a little less Mexican because he's American, but I get what you're I get what you're saying. So my thing is this is I don't have the problem. So because of natives, right, let's let's say, let's take natives. I don't have a problem with a native who knows nothing about his culture but wants to learn. Like all he knows is this is my tribe, this is my last name, and this is where I know my family's from. If that information is all he's got, that's great. It's wonderful. I have I have more love for him than the native who's 100% blood, speaks the language, is on the res, and but cares nothing to spread the knowledge. Do you get what I'm saying? So to me, it's like for people when they're talking about cultures and, oh, you're less Mexican or, oh, you're less this, you're less Italian. Like, can you trace your bloodline? Like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, like, stop. Like, that's it's colonial. Sounds, sounds a little KKK ish, if you ask me. Yeah. Like, you know, like, bro, who's 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 out here trying to prove their pure blood anymore, dog? Like that shit's over. That shit's way over because Cherokee, right? Cherokee. Fuck you, first off. Whoa. Jesus Christ. Wait, 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 First off, if this goes freaked out, I'm freaked out. What the fuck? You have a whole, like, You're going to have a whole. Fuck them. Fuck you, fuck you, motherfuckers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They will not allow. So they will not, they will not allow non federally recognized Native Americans to compete in their powwow. And that is fucked up. That is fucked up. What's a powwow? A powwow. So a powwow is pretty much like a gathering. It's a social gathering. Okay. And and in these social gatherings back in the day, it's just how guys got together and continued to kind of keep the culture moving because. You know how black people have the cookout? This is like the cookout for you. This is our cookout. Like, you know what I mean? But like, is that, is is it as casual or is it like a, like a group, like very structured event? No, it's a very big event. And there's. Very old practices are still practiced. Like if you go to North Dakota, um, I had this lady who was from North Dakota. I don't know how true this is. I hadn't seen this at one of those powwows out there, but some of them are still so traditional. They'll do like a, um, they'll do a certain ceremony, bro, where they tie you to a totem pole pretty much. Mm -hmm. And they take this fucking eagle talon and they pierce it through your skin and you have to like stand there and dance until it rips out. What? Doug, what? yeah, it's nuts. It's nuts, and it, it happens sounds... like once a year, and it's like a huge honor to do it. Like it's a huge honor to do this. Wait, for so your it just tribe. slices your chest? So All the, the way eagle, like, so the eagle talon. What? How you're supposed to do it is, is they're supposed to grab just a little piece of your flesh, and it pierces through it like a piercing. Oh, okay. Like I thought gate. it was like run it like it was like on a string or some shit that was like running. Okay, through. so you, you have two. Through. You have two. Mm-hmm. And then these are tied to a totem pole. And supposedly back in the day, what you were supposed to do is take an eagle whistle. You put it in your mouth and lean back. And so you can't scream. Oh, you're not supposed to be able to yell. You just blow through the whistle. And the, because the eagle whistle is very blessed. That's like a very blessed. What thing. I don't know how true. I don't know how true any of this is. <laughs> okay. I don't know how true any of this is, but I have heard these stories. <laughs> gotta, so somebody, you, you gotta like, you gotta like, gotta like fucking, fuck. it, you back that ass up until they come out or what? Uh, I don't know. I don't I, like. From what I know, is like you're supposed to just walk back until you can't anymore and start leaning. 
like you like like lean back like you know what i'm saying like where you can walk your feet up to your like leaning you know what i mean and like, like if you pass out like there's supposed to be people watching over you like like they watch over you to make sure you don't fucking die you know um you know get you hydrated and shit all those type of, like it's a huge process supposedly i don't know who, who does this um uh, this is like in the dakotas so like i might have to look this shit up dog i'm gonna look it up, shit up right now i think it's called a sundance if i remember ah. right it's called a sundance Sundance. Um, wait who does this Dakota. i think it's i think it's in the dakotas i think the the nakota and lakota people were doing that how do you spell that nakota n-a-k-o-t-a 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 and nakota sundance and nakota look one day we're gonna have somebody that can pull this up for us yeah, like, like an part actual of the stream, fact like, checker. <laughs> you, know, like, you know how Joe Rogan has Jamie? Like, hey, yeah. Jamie, Jamie, even if his name or her name isn't Jamie, we need to just call them Jamie. But yeah. anywho, right? So it's Cherokee, it's fuck it's these it's motherfuckers it's because they don't let people oh they don't let people compete at the powwow unless they're federally recognized. Like, you you said, what I'm saying? Wait, that's not what you said earlier. You said they don't even let federally recognized tribes go. So misquote. Misquote. They, okay. won't, they don't let non-fed Oh, okay. Compete in the powwows. Okay. And to me, that is fucked up because they'll. All right. So when we make that a clip that he said, fuck those people, we got to make sure that subtext. I don't know if that's. I, I don't know if that's making it into a clip, bro. Because then we going viral and getting canceled. Fuck them, dude. <laughs> fuck off. Fuck off. Stop campaigning against my people. Stop it. Knock it the fuck off. We are one yeah. people. North hey. Carolina, recognize. We, the fuck? We're all one people, you know, natives, blacks. Wise Asians. Bro, they campaign against my tribe, <laughs> against our federal <sighs> recognition. You know what's crazy is I actually saw this video. Now that we're talking about, now that I, you know, you said we're all one people, I actually saw this um, TikTok of this Jamaican cat, and he was kind of making a point to how we're all the same and that we're all like a spirit inside of our body. Like we didn't choose the body, right? But like we're all a spirit. This is just our outside layer. And uh, <clears throat> he was like, Take a take a black can, or he's like, take like five cans. Get a black one, a white one, a yellow one, a purple one, and a red one. And fill them all up with drinking water. And then put a lid on each one of them. And then he's like, if you grab this one, you don't know what's in it until you drink it. And then mm -hmm. once you drink it, you're going to be like, what is that? Oh, it's water. Okay, now take the other one. You don't know what's in that one, but drink it. And then you'll realize that they're all the same, regardless of what the outside of them looks like. And I was like, oh, I saw bro, yeah, yeah. yeah, but he was like, you know, just Jamaican cat. He had like Patois. Yeah, it was cool. and I was like, bro, that, that is clat, bon clat boy. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> it ain't a ting, brother. Uh, but yeah, like it was, uh, I was like, fuck, that was, that was like the coolest analogy I've ever heard about like, we should all come together as people that I've ever heard in my life. It was bro, I, worked, I worked with this bro. Jamaican dude while I was in Florida. Hold on. And I think, I think Damo found right. something. No, no, no. I was actually just saying I can't find too much of anything. I haven't seen anything of that practice. A lot of Reddit. it is just like Reddit. A lot, it, a lot of it is just like um Sundance is like they'll kind of look towards the sun and like dance and, and pray, it seems like. Um, just like through a quick reading. And I haven't been able to find anything on, on the Eagle Talon you were saying. Um, so I'm not too sure. I haven't been able to find anything on that. I actually know a dude who did it. That's how I learned about it. I just want to know, but um, the sacred uh, sun dance through the da though the dance is practiced differently by different tribe, the eagle serves mm -hmm. as a mm, hold on. There was like there was like one with an eagle staff where there was a staff that had eagle talons at the end, but I don't know. I don't think that looks like this it's is it. Though. This is it right here. It's in the Washington Post. I think I found it. Hold on. Yes, we interact with chat. Do there's somebody? Hold on. There is somebody on Twitch right now trying to say that we don't interact with chat. They just had me blink twice if they can hear me. Dude, I hear you guys. Hold on. Let me bring you on screen. Nah, just play. <laughs> oh, oh, Olivia. Oh, 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 Olivia. We love you. You're heard and you're seen. All right? We love you guys. Whoever's here. Who, who's even in here? Oh, they're all from, up, they're all from Twitch. Yo, everybody what's in my chat. Say what's up. Say what's up. Say hi to everybody. Well, it's I have really, five people. What's hi. Really, what's really cracking? Um. Oh, dude, no, bro. I worked with this Jamaican, and I swear to God, everything he said was fucking hilarious, bro. <laughs> like everything all the time. It was just like, and he would call me, he would call me Bigs, to Bigs. I got me a little bumbleclat girl at the house, bro. 
It's like, a what? Like, somebody put on the subtitles with this motherfucker, bro. Because he would just come up with words, pussy clot, bro clot. It's a bumbled clot, yeah, pussy the, clot. The pussy clot, girl. Suck be right your mother. <laughs> bro, big ups, big ups. Uh, Patois is my favorite language of all time. Like, I love legit. it. It's, it. I wish I could speak it. I wish I could have the accent. Like, I love that shit, bro. It's fucking, that's my number one. Number one. Bro, and after a while, once I, like, like kind of really learned how to, like, understand him, because, bro, he would speak Spanish to me, too. So he would mm. be speaking Spanish and English with a Jamaican accent. I was like, what? Like, whoa. Oh, Yo, why. that shit just me out, like, the, the UK Hispanics. When they, like, speak English, it obviously has, like, an English accent. But then when they speak Spanish, it's, like, it's like perfect Spanish. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> where the fuck did the accent go? That shit trips me the fuck out. Mm. The fuck out. Or like, or like Asian people when they speak Spanish. Because it's like a huge Asian culture in Mexico. Yeah, that shit. I, had, I remember one time I was selling cars and I had like this. I thought he was Chinese. And then he started speaking like fluent Spanish to me. I was like, what the fuck? It tripped me the fuck out. My fucking wires got crossed. I was like, Ugh. that shit was Come nuts. On. All right, demo. I'm ready to get dirt, baby. I'm ready to see what you. Uh, I'm ready to see the what one. Are you packing. So this is the second meat. question. Is- the, the reason people might be here, I don't know. I have the shit titled that way. Um, <clears throat> I was listening to your guys's the previous podcast, um, and you guys are still talking about grief a lot. And uh, at some point, talking about, I know, I believe his um, dog, if I'm not mistaken, passed away. Um, and yeah, just stuff like that. So it was a lot. It's been a lot of grief recently. Um, a lot, bro. A lot of grief. <laughs> but you know, I hope, I hope everybody out there feels loved. I hope you guys feel loved. Um, but it got me to this idea of like um, this question popped up into my mind when I was re- when I was watching it uh, when I was watching the podcast. And the, the question is, if you could speak to somebody who had passed away and they could tell you what death felt like what mm. would you want them to say what, what it you feels hope? like yeah in the moments of like <sighs> leaving and exiting and, and dying essentially that whole process what would you hope best case maybe worst case scenario i want i kind of want both best and worst case scenario of like what would you hope and what would you really hope it doesn't feel like and we're about to get dark bro yeah yeah no i said it was gonna be a it might be a downer i don't know that's what i said um so there's been a few deaths that have really like fucked me up in my lifetime um and some of them weren't peaceful and so i hope that death for me wasn't isn't that Right. I don't want a glorious death. I want a very, you know, simple, like old in my bed. Um, Definitely old, you know, very old. Um, But there's been people who I wondered, like, were they scared? You know, like, were you remorseful? Were you happy? You know what I mean? Is it how, you know, were you relieved? You know, Um, like I had a buddy who... Uh, who drowned bro when we were kids dude we were like in seventh grade and his death fucked me up um there's a lot to it but it's like i wondered like how scared was he because he was learning how to swim that day and it's like how how scared were you bro like you know what i mean or like i had a buddy javi recently um, about two years ago he was shot by the cops like you know what i mean like in gang activity all this shit was like running from the cops and it's like were you scared you know what I mean? Like, were you scared or were you just like, fuck, they got me? Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you have like grandpa and pops who died in their sleep. And it's just like, did you feel it or did it just come? Mm-hmm. You know, like, did y'all just like scamper off into the into the abyss or did did you feel it? Like, did you feel it coming? Mm-hmm. Um, I hope it's like that. I hope I meet death very peacefully. I hope I meet it very peacefully. I hope that. <clears throat> You know, after this long life of playing tag with him, I <laughs> hope he just finally runs up on me. He's like, you know, found you. Yeah. Tag, you're it. And we go off. 
Um, I hope I'm really old though, bro. I don't. I remember like being young, thinking like, oh, die young. You know, legends die young. Like, nah, fuck that. Legends die old, bro. We, we're dying old out here, not at 30, bro. Not at 33. Fuck that. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, this was this is a hard one for me, bro. Uh I used to fantasize, and I don't mean fantasize, I mean like fantasize in a nightmarish hell of about death. Like death genuinely used to scare the absolute fuck out of me. Um like to the point where I contemplated suicide many, many a times because it's like it's untimely, right? But at the same time, it's like, why, what the fuck is the point if this is the demise anyways, you know? Um, so I used to just fantasize about, how, like, what the worst ways to die were. Um, same thing that, that, you know, that that corpse was saying, like, uh, what do people think? You know, and then I I think, like, obviously, like, the, the young man that you said drown, to me, that's horrific. What, what what You don't have time to think about anything, but but, you know, your life. And <clears throat> I always said that the five elements w- were the worst way to die, right? Like being buried alive, drowning, like getting ripped apart by a tornado, burning. Like those are those are like the worst ways to die. But then I also think about people that like um, like 9-11, for example, those people that knew that death was coming. So they jumped out the window yeah. and jumping out the window from 80 fucking stories up. You've got some time to think about some. You have you're looking face. You're looking face to face with death. And it's like, what do you want your last thought to be at that moment? Or if you're in a plane and it's going down, you have plenty of time to think. What What do you want your last thought to be in that moment? Um, you know. But then you have other shit where, like, if something was to randomly fall out of the sky and crash into my house, I never had the chance to think about what my last. Like, I wouldn't. I didn't. I wouldn't have the moment to think about what my last thought is. Um, and I too like you know, like most people in this world want to, want to leave peacefully. Um, I've always, I've envisioned my death now um, as I'm older, like more peaceful and me just saying like, I'm, I'm ready to, I'm, I'm just ready to rest. Like I'm ready to go to sleep forever. And, and, and I did everything that I wanted to do. And like you said, you know, I, I've told everybody that I love and showed them that I love them very much and care about them, but it, it's still like, I'm, I'm more at peace with the fact that we have to go. Um, you know, like yeah, it was funny. I'm back on Twitter, baby. Um, but like even I think yesterday <laughs> <was> so random, <laughs> sorry. But, uh, I have been off I have been off Twitter for a very long time. We about to get I, wild. I, I had a very large Twitter following um back in the day. Uh but yeah, uh I even uh tweeted the other day Memento Mori, and it just means like remember that you have to die. Um and to me now it it re- just reminds me just well, you talked about it, right? Just show everybody that you love them and care for them and do everything in good faith and just keep moving forward, keep progressing. Um, and and just because we have to die, that means that we must we must live a good fucking life and have a good run, you know, because everything comes to an end. And the fact that we know that everything comes to an end means that we have to make it good while we're here. Time is short. Time is, you know, you know, short lived. And um, but, yeah, I would hope that. I would hope that people tell me that I still have some time, even after I take my last breath, uh, to think about, like, to have the memories, have those memories. Because, you know, we we talked about it before on a podcast where we don't, most of us don't believe that when we die, it's over. Um, and my fear is just, I, I just don't want to lose out on some memories. That's mm-hmm. that's my, I, I don't want to forget people. I don't, and I don't want people to forget me. And that was the other thing that I would always fantasize over too is like, who would come to my funeral? What would be said at my funeral? Who would remember me for what? What pictures would they post? Um, you know, would they want would 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 they hit me with an open casket? Would they hit me with a closed casket? Casket? Am I getting buried? Am I getting cremated? Who's doing what? From you know what I mean? Like, where's Peanut gonna be at? Um, so yeah, this this topic just it sends me in a fucking snowball, bro, in a whirlwind. Um, but uh, as long as we learn to be at peace with the fact that we have to go, uh, I think I think it makes the world a better place. And w- uh, for some people, that you got to remember that you ha- that you're leaving too. You know what I mean? Some people have to remember, like, hey, we don't have 
all the time that we think on this fucking world. And some of us have vices. Some of us, you know, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this is the second podcast I haven't drank. But oh I'm yeah, drinking. you're not drinking. You're good doing shit, good, bro. bro. Yeah. You're doing good, man. And it's not. It's not that I'm a fucking alcoholic. It's no, no, no. But, <laughs> but you know, like like Cause brought it up during the last episode. You know, is like people we fight with our own vices, and that's that's my that's my nighttime juice, and that's what helps me sleep at night sometimes. So, um, but. Yeah, I mean, we gotta. I fell. I fell the other day, like two days, two or three days ago. I fell, and it was like the slowest fall in the world. And I was like, it made me. I, it made me realize, like, motherfucker, you're getting kind of old, dog. Like, you can't. You just. You don't fall gracefully anymore. You can't just get the fuck back up. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was oh it was man. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I would just. I just hope that if I was able to chat with somebody, um, because I have. I'll bring up a personal story. Um, I don't know if I said this, but I had a friend uh, pass away on Easter and uh, his funeral is coming up uh, next week that I'm going to attend. Uh, but we finally found out that he he passed away uh, because of a pulmonary embolism. Um, and he was by himself in his room when he passed. And, you know, as soon as they found out the details and I I knew how they found him and, you know, like he was literally sitting on his couch with headphones in listening to music when he passed away. And, you know, like you said, like, did he have time to react? Did it just hit him out of anywhere? What, like, what was, what was his final thought? You know, like, did he think about his mom and his family before he passed or, you know, or did it just hit him too fast to where he couldn't? And it made me think about, um, it made me think about that Donnie Darko quote where they say they, they tell a story about the dog and this and then they say every living being dies alone. Hmm. And it's like even if and then I also tweeted this the other day, like, have you ever been in a have you ever felt alone? But the room is that capacity. So, like, mm -hmm. even if you're not even if you're dying in a room full of people, like you still die alone at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. it's a rough one, bro. You almost got me. You almost got me emotional on that one. But. Yeah, it's, oh, uh... <laughs> I think that I think that there's also a I think there's a part that that I I encourage now with at least with myself is is death is the next great adventure. And especially for me, because I, I just can't wrap my brain around the idea that once this is over, it's over. Like once the lights turn off, yeah, it's just bro. game over. I, I It's just too life is just too beautiful for it to be that way. And I've it had to. To have dance come out of me, like there's something in there, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there is something in there, and it honestly longs to get out. I think that is people always wonder, well, how could you think of suicide? Bro, my soul don't want this. It doesn't want to be in a body. The soul is having a human experience. Can we just clarify for the record? Because you're the second person that brought up suicide. Like, I'm not gonna kill myself, guys. No, I'm not like I'm not gonna kill myself. I'm I'm not depressed or anything like that. So you don't have anything to worry about on that end. Oh no, I no, I, I didn't get I didn't get that from anything you said right now. No, but I just want to make sure you tell everybody that you're not gonna kill yourself. No, 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 no. But I will say, but I will say, I was in Key West. Both of you in the group chat. I I will say, bro, I was in Key West. This was like a few weeks ago, matter of fact, a year ago. I remember a few I weeks sitting, ago or a year ago. Uh, it was a few, like like two weeks ago, but last year, oh, right, okay. that that day, so it's been a year. Okay, yeah. yeah, so it's been a year. I remember I was sitting on the pier right there from my from my Airbnb in Key West, and I was like, dude, I could just fucking end it. <laughs> like, I could just fucking end it right here, bro. Like, I could just like it's dark, ain't no one going to fucking see me. Like, I could just slide off into the water, boom, gone. Like, fuck off. Like, I, dude, I was so... That's why I don't I don't stand, like, in tall buildings. I never, like, look over the edge or do anything like that because that's, like, an immediate intrusive thought that hits my head. Yeah, intrusive. Yeah, really bad, bro. And I was already in a really bad space. And, like, a lot of shit, like, a, bro, like, we'll, we'll talk about it. But a lot of shit was going on. And uh, I remember thinking, like, I was saying right now, dude, like, but I don't want that kind of death. Like, that's not, that's not how I want to go, bro. That's not the... That's not the vibe. You know what I mean? Like it will come though. I do. I do always remind myself like death shall come fam. Like it shall come. Yeah. Like if you, it's interesting. Like I always, I know this is the second time I'm quoting a movie, but I always take um, the deathly hollow story from Harry Potter into consideration 
um, and you kind of like harped on it. It was a little poetic. Um, but when the last brother meets death, like an old friend that like that hits me so much. And I'm like, that's exactly like when I say that I want to go and I'm like, I'm in a 90 fucking years old and in a room full of people. I mean, I don't want to be 90 when I die, honestly, like, let's be fucking real. We don't live that long anymore, but you know, 90 years old in a, on a bed in the hospital with a room full of people. And then I just tell everybody like, it was a good run, you know, like I had a good time and I close my eyes and I take my last breath. Like that's how I would essentially want to go. But at the same time, it's like, I want to be hit at blindside. So I don't even know that I'm dead, you know, bro. Check it out. My grandpa was 93 when he passed. I saw him that morning, bro. Every day when I would go to his pad, I'd walk in, you know, I knock, I walk in, I'd go, what's up, grandpa? He goes, oh, just waiting to die. <laughs> like every time. <laughs> but he would say it different other ways. He goes, oh, just, you know, waiting to die. It's like, it was always different, but it was always the same answer, you know? Because, bro, he missed my grandma. Like, you know, he missed yeah. my grandma. And yeah. that's just what it was. You know what I mean? It, it, it's what it was. He was a grumpy ass old man. That day when I pulled up, bro, I swear, I knew it. I knew it. He was having trouble like with his pacemaker, like, that's a whole nother like family story but it was, there was like discussions of what they should do i went there to go see him um i go <laughs> i go what's up grandpa he goes he goes putch i ain't got long left and mm. i was like oh i was like man why are you talking like that chill out right and i sat down and he like yeah. made his peace with me like mm. i like i realized it as it was happening like oh my god my grandpa's making his fucking peace with me right now i was like fuck he's gonna die like right Bro, I remember uh, I was staying at an ex-girlfriend's house that night. And, uh, and uh, dude, I got a phone call. Well, crazy part was is I, the dream, I was getting a phone call from my dad. And he goes, uh, he goes, go see your grandpa. And I go to my grandpa's house. And in the dream, my grandma's there. She goes, you better come say bye because he ain't got long left. I wake up to a phone call from my dad. Saying, come to your grandpa's. And I was sure. like, all right. I was like, all right, I'm on my way. And there was no other word said. I remember I kissed her. I kissed my ex. Bro, I did like 120 down the 101 all the way to fucking South Oxnard, bro, from Camarillo. Got there in like 10 minutes. Damn. And, and he was, yeah, he was right there. He was gone. Isn't it crazy when you know, like you get that phone call, you know, like when my grandma passed away, I was in a barber chair and it was like 3 p.m. And my phone was vibrating, so I, like, grabbed my phone out of my pocket, and it was my dad. And I knew as soon as I saw that, like, that phone light up my dad's name, I knew that my grandma had passed away. And I answered, mm -hmm. and he was like, hey, your grandma passed away. And I was like, fuck. Mm -hmm. that was, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, what about you, D? I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you, you brought up the, I know Punch and I kind of just been going on. We can talk no, about I mean, death. Yeah, I can talk I'm about death all fucking day, bro. I'm, I'm interested in you guys' thoughts. Um, ideally, I mean, in a perfect world, it'd be so nice to just. Oh my God, you in this perfect fucking world. In this perfect you need to, universe. You need to write a book that's called In a Perfect World. That's a good title. That is a, that is a really lie. good title. That is a sick ass title. Oh, hey, I actually, um, I saw your YouTube video, you rapping. You should drop an album called In a true. Perfect World. I appreciate that. <laughs> In a Perfect World, I got a perfect girl. Courage. Anyway, um, ideally, I would love for it to be super peaceful regardless, right? Whether it be super, super detrimental to what just happened as far as like accidents or whatever. Hopefully, the people who have passed, who I'm talking to, like, yo, Tell me what what's the breakdown? How does it feel? Like you you hit or you do whatever, and it feels like a release. Like you finally just let go of your grip on a really tight object that you might have in your hands. Like you're just holding it as tight as you can, and then you finally just released it. Um, I would hope that that's what it felt like. Um, wow, what an analogy! I felt yeah. that in my body, bro. The way you just said that right now. Bro, when he said it, like that bong hit hit me all at the same time. I was like, <laughs> shh, shh, like, just release. Wow, that was wow. Like wow. I, I, I kind of think there's something to be said. Um, to what Corp said, as far as like your soul feeling like there's something, um, like not right that you want to be out and be limitless. Essentially, um, there's a portion of you I think that does want that, but 
I think there's when he said that there was like something in my head that was like maybe to be truly limitless, you have to learn to first be limited in like your body, learn to really be content with the fact that you can't do everything, the fact that you have to be at peace with certain things that you'll never get to do or never get to say or lose out on and um but but also with the positives with enriching so much of your life with the things that you decide to get to do and decide mm. to spend your time with and things like that and mm. then when you're out and released not only do you get all those benefits of learning everything from that but you truly appreciate after being limitless in in your life afterwards hopefully um that was but, profound that was absolutely. profound son yeah that i mean because profound, that, that, that 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 just it just holy fuck that because was profound that, that just goes along with so much shit because the more you're limited, the more that you realize why you've been limited in order to reach your limitless potential. Bro, that's like bhakti Holy. yoga. That was like bhakti yoga in a fucking <laughs> nutshell spark. Holy, up. bro. You bro, are, that is zen. Like, that is are. like being like, and that is, that is seriously, because, bro, I've, I've been trying to do more like yogic practice, like the mm. whole actual religion behind yoga, like detaching yourself from certain expectations of life and that things belong to you, you know, but these experiences that we're having belong to us. Like this human connection, you know what I mean? Like the experience that I have with this person is mine. That person isn't like, you know what I mean? Like there's a, there should be a disconnect. Like, like mm -hmm. that's, that, that's the thing that they kind of, and that's kind of like what it sounded like you were saying right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like this experience of life. Yeah. That's us. Like that's a part that our soul likes mm -hmm. that energy, that feeling like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. profound mm -hmm. my man <laughs> that was that was absolutely insane the way you just described that and that was, it was profound that almost yeah you moved me on that one bro oh, i appreciate that yeah now though the, the was... worst fucking case scenario holy shit one of the worst things i feel like anybody could tell me if if i spoke to somebody in the afterlife and they were like you know if this was at all possible if they were like you know you things like hurt and then that's it. It's over. Like, I, th I think you were, you had touched on the corpse. You were like, you know, it doesn't make sense for everything to just be over when you've had such a beautiful or tragic or, or short or long or whatever it may be life. It doesn't make sense to me in my head at all for it to just be over. I think that would be one of the most tragic things. I don't believe it, but I'm like, if it were to be true, I, I mean, obviously I can't do anything. There's, nothing you're I can do. yeah, you're yeah i'm done but um what well, i'm like i just can't like i can't even fathom the ending of such such a life to just be over and that's that's kind of it that's kind of how you spend your time forever it's crazy that we use especially in this show we talk about science the science behind stuff in so many different ways and so many different aspects of things that we chat about but this is the one that you can't like this is yeah. genuinely the one that th that you nobody will ever be able to make sense of. Mm -hmm. Like it, both of the concepts make sense, right? Like it makes sense that something happens after this. It makes a hundred percent sense. But at the same time, it also makes a hundred percent sense that it just ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But based off science, right? Based off the science of inertia, like you can't kill energy, and essentially we are energy. Yeah, that's the thing. And I don't I don't I don't believe my consciousness will transfer as far as, you know, past this life. But I feel that it's like it's what is it what is what is the paradox of like the the arc? What is it the 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 uh the the Argo or whatever, where it's like they had they had the boat and over time it's been rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt. And oh yeah, that's uh, it... it's it's how many pieces do you replace the boat till it's a new boat? Until it's, it's a new boat. The... Yeah, yeah. At what point is it a new boat? Yeah, I mean, we I think we touched on this before too when we were talking about like we were talking about like souls and going past and shit. Mm. Um, I think. I don't oh really yeah, yeah, the splitting of souls and yeah, 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 we did talk about this. I don't give a fuck about none of that as long as point oh 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 one of me is still out there, dog. If we're out here still rocking, I'm still out here. We out here, like. But that's the interesting concept, right? It's like, do does your spirit have consciousness? Yes. Does it though? Because and do you have to relearn that? Like, do you have you know what I mean? Because 
as a child, you have to like, are, where does the, what, are, is it, is your limit a new body or is your limit or like, it, are you limitless? So Cause then, then if you're, if your spirit had consciousness, like you'd be able to talk as a child, right? Cause you would remember your, like how to speak. But there's some other innate abilities that we do what when we're born that we just got going on. Like a like a baby knows to seek seek its mother's tit. Nine months, nine <laughs> months of development. Was... Nine nine months of development in a womb, never seen a tit in its life. The moment it's born, that baby knows where to go. Like I mean, that's a crazy you make, you make a good point. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Because you, you were there. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Is... Okay, but demo, demo, listen. Bro, this is a hey, this is actually a really good point. Hey, really stop giggling good. at the fact that he said tit. Hey, no, bro. I just, it was just like left field. My bad. It was bro, bro, I mean, I mean it is, people it don't is. believe in instincts. It, Some people do oh, not believe okay. in human instinct, right? I thought and, okay, so sorry. In my head, I was like, I, I was confused on I thought you were saying that like by conscious choice, you have the no, no, conscious no. ability to go seek out a titty. That's all. Well, like, yeah, because you know that's your f- source of food. Is that's your saying. source of food? But I, you're not even. Insane. You're like, oh shit, baby, hello. Wah, wah, wah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't remember. I know what the fuck I'm supposed to do here. I'm supposed to go look for a tit to eat for milk. Yeah, they they understand that that's what's for them. Like a like, dude, it's it's nuts. It is it's nuts. Because so, I was literally looking through old videos of Elijah, and it was like the nurse was telling Sid like, okay, like, you know, in a little bit, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you like, you know, how to, how to, you know, like how to breastfeed them. I was like, Oh fuck. Like this is actually happening. Do you know, right now. Do you know scientifically that that's why women's areolas get darker when they're pregnant for breastfeeding. Oh, so, I the, didn't ba- know that. so the baby knows where to go. Oh, it can and see that, it. And, that, and that's why typically women have larger areolas than men do. Areola. So the, oh, I like that word. <laughs> so, the, so the baby knows where to latch on. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Dude, listen to us mansplain breastfeeding. <laughs> yeah, for, uh, I mean, uh, Jordan says a baby kangaroo goes straight to the mama's pouch for a tit. You get me? There's just, there's uh, just. Wait, do kangaroos many... have tits higher than their pouch or are their tits just in their pouch? Jamie, can you look no that idea. up? <laughs> Give that a I'm, gonna look it up. I'm just going to look it up right now. Uh, wait, I'm I just, genuinely I, so curious. I think that there's too many human instinctual experiences that that we have for us to not have some kind of past life that's getting passed down, whether it's consciously or genetically. I don't know. Like, I don't know how we're doing it, but we're fucking doing it because there's just been times when you watch people and they're just good. They're just good at certain things. They just talk good. You know what I mean? So, whoever, so you're saying like whoever gets like LeBron James spirit is just gonna be Tug. money. Uh, a kangaroo's tit is inside its pouch, so they don't have any other tits like dogs do. Mm, no, it looks like they only have one. They have one tit. That's what it looks like. I don't know, bro. I'm trying not to get some NSFW shit on my on my. Okay, right now. okay. See if you kangaroos. See if you, see if, do do do, can, do kangaroos only have one Joey at a time? I think so. They're so big. I think it's okay. Only my man is a fucking zoologist over here. One Joey. I would have just said baby kangaroo. Oh, that dog. Kangaroo. Him, bro. Him, bro. <laughs> hey, I don't know a lot of things, but what I know, I know. Okay. Oh my okay. god. Because they know, have more than one. Like, no kangaroo. Fight over the, the impressive mothers and can raise three Joeys simultaneously. They can only support one. Wait, what? They can. They can support. One on foot. This is to say the uh it looks like they can support three. One in the pouch and one in the womb. It looks like but I don't know if they can give birth to more than one. So Jordan's like at a time that they have typically one to three nipples. So you're sitting here telling me that different kangaroos have different amounts of nipples. So one got two, two got three, and one got one. What? Just did, one got just two, two got number three. block shit to me right now. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Um, how do we get to yeah, kangaroos? <laughs> oh, because uh, yeah. the kangaroo instinct is to go to the pouch. Corpse got but, corpse. Yeah, me lost for a second. You all right, bro? <laughs> I thought about dude. So oh, he, he delving. Uh, do you see? Do you see how I just like? 
like like tranced off dude into this crazy like thought dude oh i'm my doing god. my best not to do that right now but i'm telling you after this podcast right now bro i'm about to lay in my bed like this oh my god dude i'm gonna be staring at the scene no bro fuck I just... um, <laughs> no it's not a bad thing we gotta talk about this type of we shit. gotta talk yeah, i was yeah, just about do. to we say do. that dude we gotta talk about stuff like this man as men bro we have to talk about the things that affect us right because you know first off they didn't want us to be super masculine and not talk about our feelings and just punch holes in the walls, right? They wanted us to be emotionally intelligent. Now we're emotionally intelligent. Now they get pissed off because now we're emotional. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, damn, dude, let's let's fucking just get this right. Okay, let's let's just keep this shit up, man. Um, towards the end of my dad's life, like it got bad, bro. Like it got bad, and I just hope I don't. I. I hope I don't take a death like that because it was like a series of events. Like, you know what I mean? Like it was a series of, of th- I'm just hope I just get super old, bro. And go no pacemaker. I don't want no fucking pacemaker. Don't do not resuscitate. <laughs> if I fucking go, I go fam. Yeah, I, I said the same thing. Like if there's a wire that you could unplug and I die, just leave it unplugged. You better not let me catch you putting me on life support, you son of a yeah, bitch. Like, yeah, you... Don't put me on life support. If I need some, but that's what scares me, right? And my brother always makes a joke about it because, like, on my driver's license, it shows that I'm an organ donor. And he was like, yo, who the fuck would want your organs? Like, you have a bad yeah, heart. Yeah, you, you wear fuck? glasses. Like, you drink like a motherfucker. And you, so you have a bad liver and kidneys. Like, what the fuck other organs are you going to have? And I told him, I said, at least my dick still works. Like, they could take that if they want it. But. You know, I, and so <laughs> it scares me because I drink a sh- like I drink a lot, bro. Like when I not that I drink very often, but when I drink, I drink a lot. Like it takes me a lot to get drunk. I smoke like a fucking chimney. Like when I used to smoke cigarettes, I used to smoke a pack a day. It was bad. Yeah, like, I, I bad, do remember bro. we used to be bad, bro. Bro, it was bad. And, you know, like uh, my heart is already fucked. Like I have a bad heart. I can't get somebody in my heart. So, you know, my, luckily I can wear glasses, but my, my eyes aren't terrible, but they're they're getting worse as I get older, bro. I've been starting to get kind of bad. My eyes are getting bad. I, I check I would be like realize I'm squinting, I'm like, oh fuck, where the fuck are my glasses at? It's bad, bro. So um yeah, I think that I think that's what's gonna happen to me is I think I'm slowly gonna start falling apart. I I I, I, I think I'm gonna start falling apart at some point. Bro, there was a uh, it's good that like, you're in the gym all the time. I'm trying to get back to that. But, bro, yeah, you've been in the gym a lot, it seems like, which is good. 1% better, like you say. Yeah, bro. You, hey, I follow you on Twitter. You <laughs> have to start posting some nasty shit on there. You can't post what you post on your Instagram. I'm going to start putting, I'm going to make an OnlyFans, dude. That's what I'm going to do. And just sell like feet pics. Oh, dude. shit. Bro, I couldn't I even like give feet, my feet pics support. away if I took them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, dude, I got to stay in the gym, bro. Like, because I just be here by myself. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I don't have the kiddos, like, it's like, I, what else am I doing? I'll read, you know. I'll get my two three. Wait, chapters. kiddos? You watching more than one kid? We'll talk about that later. Oh. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk. We'll talk about all that later. We'll talk all about that later. Interesting. Um, but uh, my bad. I didn't mean to call you out like that. You know, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk okay, about that later because cool, cool, cool. that was one thing I needed to hit y'all up about. Um, but yeah, it's either I'm in the gym or work. You know what I mean? And so. If you like it, like I said, if I'm not with the squirts, then it's what I mean. Like, what the fuck else am I doing? I don't go out and drink, bro. I don't, I don't try to sit around and smoke. I don't want to be on my phone that much. Like I already, I'm already on my phone way too fucking much. Like when I see my screen time, it's like five hours. Like what the fuck am I doing on my phone, bro? For five hours. No way. Bro, what shit is a seven? Like seven and a half. <laughs> I'm, no. about to look up, I'm about to look up mine. No I'm way. Hold on. Let me look up. My, mine today is one. bad. Mine today is bad. Today wow, only? Bro, today is bad. I know. For oh, sure. I, I beat both of you. My daily average is four hours and 58 minutes. So I'm not on my phone. No. But... What do you mean, bro? Daily average, I got seven. Yeah, so mine is better because oh. I'm not on my phone that much. Oh, Dude, I thought you were saying no your reading way. is like you got more. My shit is six hours right now. Yeah, I'm I'm four hours and fifty eight minutes. Which Dude. trippy, bro? I feel like I'm at work for eight hours. Oh How shit, my shit just went up it today. Just my shit literally just went hours. up six hours and thirty minutes. How do you look at today? Is How does that? Oh, day. How does that even happen? Today. Oh, Oh damn! Five hours and twelve. Minutes. On the gang, bro. I need to stay off my phone, oh my. dude. It makes can you me sad? Can you guess what my highest, like what my what I use the most? What? Pornhub. That's <laughs> second. 
<laughs> uh, TikTok. Jesus Christ, dude. Who are you? Two hours and 33 minutes. You're with TikTok. a fucking communist. I knew it. I Whoa, what? Knew what? You're a fucking communist. But it says Safari, which we all know what the fuck I do on Safari. <laughs> an hour and two minutes. I got TikTok Oof. at an hour and 13. Somebody give me that. That's not bad. <laughs> bro i gotta go for walks dog i'd be in the house man listen to me bro L- listen and this is this is like this is like some deep rooted like like i just can't dude like i'll be in the house fam and it's like i don't want one of these guys to end up sending a fucking wellness check you know what i'm saying because i'm dead in my on my fucking couch that like, scares me even that. more, bro. That oh my god, that thought. My, my here's the worst. It used to be Oscar, right? Like it used to be. I used to be scared that I would like die in the crib by myself, and Oscar would just be like tripping because he does. He don't talk. He don't know how to pick up a phone and fucking call anybody, and he would like try and wake me up. Now my fear is that fucking peanut finds me. <laughs> oh fuck yeah! At like five, hey. I told you, snowball, bro. This is what happens in my brain. Like, Peanut oh, finds man. me at five or six years old, and I'm fucking dead. He don't know what the fuck to do. You yeah. know what I mean? He doesn't understand the concept. Of, I mean, he understands the concept of death, but I don't think he, like, it's never been closely related to anything that's happened to him yeah. except for a fish. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, Coda died when he was three, like, two or three, so he doesn't really remember that. Austin was going to die soon. You know what I mean? So that'll be like the closest thing. And even then, like he never, he doesn't have a relationship with his dog like I do. So he's just going to see, he's just going to know that death means sadness because he sees daddy sad. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I've already thought about that shit. It's like, it, it, am I going to want to show my emotions of how I feel once Oscar passes in front of him? Because it goes back to like what you said, like I, I don't ever want to seem weak to my son. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But then I also like envision him like wiping my tears and telling me like it's gonna be okay, Daddy. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so I've been I've actually been contemplating getting a new dog for the reason of having a dog that can grow up with him. Mm-hmm. But, but at the same time, it's like why do I want to sign myself up for what happens at the end? You know what I mean? Because that's a part of it, baby. Yeah. That's a part of the journey's the end. Gotta be worth it. <laughs> that part of the journey's the end, bro. And I think about that shit. And bro, I pray. I pray every time when I'm with Elijah. I'm like, dude, just not today. <laughs> like, God, if any day, just not today. I don't want him. Yeah, wait till I jump back off at his mom's house, okay? Yeah, at least, at least like you know what I mean. Because, bro, like I was saying, bro, with my pops, it got bad at the end, and there was a day where it got it was really bad, and uh, he ended up in the hospital for a few days, and uh, bro, my sisters end up flying out. It's bad, right? And fucking. I think I remember this when it's just because we're in town. Bro, and then that morning, right? This motherfucker is like, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what is going on, bro? And I go in the room and he's laying there, dog. And it's like, my sisters are freaking out, bro. And his blood, like, his blood sugar was so fucking low, dog. Like, he he honestly looked like he was on Zanny's, but his blood sugar was so fucking low, bro. So that my sisters are tripping out. And I just remember, dog, I, I, this is probably the third time I've ever told this story. Um, I Dude, I just remember, like, they were like, hold his head up. And, like, so I got, like, on the bed, and I had his, dude, I had his head in between my legs. And I remember the thought, like, oh, fuck, my dad's about to die, dude. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, it's about to happen right now. Like, this is about to, like, this is, this is the day. And I mean, luckily, like we were able to get his blood sugar up. The the ambulance came for him or whatever. And so we got we we stole some more time with him. But like I think about that, and it's like I think about for myself, like at 20 fucking how old was I? 20 fucking four at the time. It was like if he would have died, bro, I, I don't know how that would have impacted me. Oh, like in real? that moment, like that moment. Like mm-hmm. me sit with him in my lap, like, oh fuck! <laughs> like, oh, did I tell oh, you? Uh, did I tell you about the time when my mom had COVID and I had to take her to the hospital? No. Oh, bro. So this was like midst of COVID, and my mother is a little bit older, um, and she she's like a little heavier set. So she, you know, her 
breathing problem. She her breathing isn't always the best, and um, you know she's had her hips replaced. She has like a, a knee replacement, so she can't get. She can. She's mobile. She just can't get around easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, not like my mom is like super big or anything. She just she just a little you know a little thicker. Um, so I remember she had got COVID, and my brother my brother and sister in law had COVID. So they were like my. The house used to be two stories that they lived in, and my mother lived in the bottom, and they were at the top. And they were like, "We don't want to continue to sp- spread it back and forth, so we're just gonna stay at the top." And then, so I, I would come check up on mom's, and I would bring her whatever she needed. And uh, I remember they, she had gone to the hospital at first, and um, you know, they they sent her home, and I was pissed that they sent her home because your if if ever your oxygen gets below ninety, you have to stay in the hospital. She was at like 83 and, but the hospitals were so full. They didn't have any, like they couldn't keep them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they sent her home with this thing that she would put on her finger that it, they would track the oxygen. So I went to her crib one day to check up on her. She didn't look very good. And her oxygen got down to like 78 or something like that. And I was like, mom, you got to go to the hospital, bro. Like you, uh, you, I'm taking you to the hospital. And my mother is very stubborn. She was like, no, I'm not going to the hospital. I just need to rest. I just need to get this shit. I just need to re- rest and let it take its course. So I said, okay, if you if, if if this gets under like 75, call me and I will take you to the hospital. She was like, okay. And uh, I remember it was later that night. I was streaming and I looked down at my phone and it lit up. And so I checked and it was my mom. She texted me. She didn't even call me, bro. She texted me and she was like, I'm ready to go to the hospital. So Damn. I'm like, I'm like, I got a jam. So I fucking shut off the stream. I run out the door. I get to her crib and uh, she couldn't even walk, bro. Her fucking oxygen got down to 64. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, bro. And I'm telling you, you're not even supposed to be below 90 before they let, like if you're below 90, they don't let you leave the hospital. She was at 64. So I'm like getting her in the car. At this point, like I ain't got no mask, I don't got no gloves on. Like I don't give a fuck, bro. Like get in the fucking car. So I'm it's pouring fucking rain, bro. And I'm like speeding to the hospital. And I could tell that she's like going in and out of consciousness. And it sounds like she's fucking drowning in the passenger seat. And I had that same thought, like, oh my fucking God, my mom is gonna fucking die on the way to the hospital in the car with me in the rain. Like, I, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I was freaking the fuck out, bro. And I wound up getting into the hospital. I, like, ran over, got a wheelchair. I fucking got her in the wheelchair, ran over, and I was like, hey, my mom needs to go in there now. Like, she's fucking, she's, her oxygen level's at 64. And they were like, okay, well, we need to fill this out. I'm like, no, you guys got to, like, she needs to go in there now. Like, this is, she's dying. Um, long story short, my mom wound up being in the hospital for, like, eight days. And uh, she made a full recovery. She's good. But, bro, it, I, I. When I dropped her off and I came back and I got back home, I just remember like crying my fucking eyes out, bro. Because one, I thought I was about to lose my mom with me, but I was so scared that that was going to be the last time, like that was going to be the last image of my mom that I was going to see was her. Like she couldn't even make words, bro. Like it was so bad. And she wasn't, she wasn't even like conscious. And she was, the sound was, like it genuinely sounded like somebody was drowning, like out of water, um, and I cried my eyes out, bro. I thought I was gonna lose my fucking mom, and uh, I called every fucking hour to that hospital for the for the next like eight or nine days to make sure she was good. And it was bad because at the beginning, like the, I would say the first two days, she was losing more and more oxygen. So they were like, we have to take her to ICU and we got to put her on oxygen. Like she's oxygen dependent right now. So I was like, fuck, man, I'm I'm really going to lose my fucking mom, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and she didn't have the strength to answer her phone. She didn't have the strength to text or anything. Uh, but, yeah, and then I, I remember picking her up from the hospital uh, when she got released. And I cried then, too, because I was like, and I looked at her, I was like, I thought you, like, I thought you were gone. And she was like, me, too. <laughs> and, then we, <laughs> and, then we, and then we laughed about <laughs> it. We laughed about it. And then... Uh, I said, do you remember anything about me picking you up? And she said, I remember you were driving like Fast and the Furious. But she was like, I don't remember you getting me to the hospital or anything. She was like, I just thought that we were going to die before you got me to the hospital. And I was like, hey, my bad. Like, I just wanted to make sure you were good. 
But yeah, man, it fucked me up. I it fucked me up. So, you know, now I use that same mentality. Like, what, what, how? What is the last image of my of me that my son will see? What is the last image of me that most people will see? Mm-hmm. That, that, that's what fucks me up. Here we go with the fantasizing again. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, these are the types of things that, that, and this is why death. Like, I'm at peace with the fact that I have to die, but it still kind of scares the shit out of me because I don't know what 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 I'm leaving behind. Yeah, and that's I think, you know, I've never had a relationship where they they said I didn't do enough. It was always I was doing too much. And I don't mind that. I'll take that, right? And because I don't, when I make my journey, I just don't want to leave any stone unturned. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I want, I want to squeeze the juice out of this great lemon. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, I just, I do, bro. Like, I want to get the squeeze of life. I want the things that I want to enjoy, I want to enjoy it. You know what I mean? And the people, that I enjoy. I want to enjoy them. You know what I mean? The conversations, the laughs, the, the, the arguments, you know what I mean? The disagreements and, and working through them as friends, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, my family, like loving them endlessly. Like the, like I remember before being so young and just being like, fuck it, die today. It's like, nah, bro. Like, like now, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, nah, like, I got to, like, there's people I got to see tomorrow. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's. Honestly, though, when I go, I, I don't want to be sober, bro. What? I want to have, like, a nice little, give me a Hennessy on the rocks as I go, bro. Let me sip that motherfucker before I go, because I don't want to be sober. That's wild. I don't know. I, I guess just because I don't like drinking. Give me some candy, maybe, I guess. Mm-mm. But um, that's wild. Wait, Find why? Me. Why exactly? I don't know if it's too... Why don't I want to be sober? Why, yeah, yeah. Why do you want to be drunk or under the... I don't want to be... I mean, I don't want to be drunk. Like, I don't want to oh. be like, oh, yeah, I'm fucked up. But I want to be like... Because I want to, like, cool coast myself. And, and because I know that... as Because of the disorder that I have, because I have pain disorder, like, yeah. I don't want to go out on a fight or flight reflex mm-hmm. and alcohol like helps me feel streamlined and like cool calm and collected so that way when i do meet uh death like an old friend you know at least we can have a beer together or something you know what i mean mm-hmm. i think um something i don't know obviously the extent to your guys is overthinking i feel like over everybody does it to some extent um but i don't know obviously the extent that you guys do it seems like it's a lot more invasive and a lot more um kind of like ever flowing it just happens all at once and it doesn't really stop um and so I, that, I don't know if we remember but we like we, we we were walking with each other one time and i was like yeah i would never want you to be in my head mm-hmm. i would never wish my what I, my thoughts i would never wish them even on my worst enemy that's how bad it gets bro it's fucking twisted up there <laughs> Oh my god, dude! <laughs> oh my god. But I think it's like admirable for for you guys to have the uh, one the wherewithal to like recognize all of that, and two to be able to still live like a, a life that seems like you guys are all um, good. I definitely want you guys to obviously feel better and more calm on a day to day, just like by yourselves. But typically. Um, Cause I do that too, like in terms of overthinking, like I said, I don't, I don't want to claim like the, the same, uh, intensity maybe. Cause I don't know. Um, but what I've tried to do like recently, I get this weirded, I get weirded out with conversation sometimes where, um, I'll feel super stressed out about talking to somebody or overthinking about different like death experiences. Like if I'm driving, I'm like, fuck bro. What if this fucking car flips hits me and I get fucking impaled with some shit. And I'm like, Oh my God, bro. Like final destination shit. Or what if a tire from the opposite lane comes fucking flying and smashes my shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Oh my fucking God. But recently I've been trying to think of like a, I don't know why I get like weird visuals for things. This ball of like Play-Doh. That's like bouncing and the the faster my thoughts go, the faster it bounces. But then I try to like smush it just on the ground 
and just have it like bro like chill just relax just like mm. um just like it's fine we're good um because out of all the things that are gonna happen could happen one thing is gonna happen and whatever that one thing is you'll kind of deal with it when it comes but you got to be ready for it um and that's allowed me to like really listen to people more in conversation of like okay what are you mm -hmm. saying what do i have to respond to and like what is a maybe funny thing to say or like what did you just say that i can kind of play off of i don't know or like when i'm driving like this toyota might probably won't flip it's probably gonna be fine uh but what is this other fucking car on the side gonna do i don't know but but focus on one thing at a time but yeah that's something do you um do you meditate um no it's something that i should do more uh but i don't listen to like music in the car so maybe that's like my form of meditation I don't know. Like I've no, because times. The, the meditation will clear your brain of those thoughts. For, for that sure. Second. For but sure. But there's different forms of meditation. So let me just clarify by saying that there's different forms of me of meditation. Um uh, and like everybody it's different stuff works for different people. You know, like some people like to go outside and meditate, some people like to hike and then meditate. Um, I take a shower when I meditate, like I use the water as a reference. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure corpse meditates a certain way so i would just find one that that works for you mm -hmm. and try and do it daily yeah it, it's it is probably a good thing um I, I should i should do it it's um something that i should make do you, time do for you journal anyway. at least no i don't do anything i literally you, go ahead i was gonna say well, since you vlog a lot and do like phone vlogs do you ever like talk to yourself and not post it um literally this has happened once and i'm kind of glad it happened the way it did my was it 23rd it was la last year it might have been it was more likely last year i made a whole video on my birthday because it was really bad it was like the worst birthday i've ever had um like i didn't really go out and that was kind of my decision a lot of things were probably my decision i didn't really go out with friends my girlfriend was working and we spent time afterwards um, I went to go try to get like one of my coffees at my favorite spot. That shit was closed. Um, there was just a lot of things that I was like, bro, I'm fucking getting older. I feel like I haven't done anything in life. I feel like I should have more figured out. It was all these like things. And I was recording the entire thing and telling myself the entire vlog that I was like, I don't know if I'm going to post this. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen with this footage, but I just want to be absolutely stupid fucking raw. Um, and say that I'm so fucking sad right now. And I like broke down crying multiple times in this video. Um, and it's nowhere to be found because I don't remember what happened in the footage. I've never been able to find it. <laughs> you deleted it, you I don't know if I deleted it. I don't know if I deleted it. I don't know what the fuck happened. Cause I was like, like weeks later, I was like, I wonder what that footage is. Cause like it was a lot of there was a lot of fucking footage, and a lot of fucking shit was raw in that shit. And I looked through all of my SD cards and none of that shit had it. I looked through all of my folders on, on my computer and I was like, dude, I, I don't know what the fuck happened. But I'm kind of glad. It was like a nice vent. And then it kind of just went into the air, kind of. It just dispersed, mm -hmm. which was which was nice. And I remember it, but uh, I'll, I don't know if I'll ever find that footage. But it was kind of nice to that it, it was think, like, it's gone. I think, uh, at least I think there's a... Yeah. Dude, I think there's a power, though, when you just take what's in your mind and just get it out. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, just get it the fuck out. Like all my dancer buddies can, can attest. Right. And I hope this is, I hope that this will make sense. This is there's a, there's a power in surrendering, right? Like submitting to the moment that's happening. And there's moments when we're dancing, you know what I mean? And, and, I mean, people find their ways to do it. And again, it's it's one of my forms of meditation. But it's, I know when I'm dancing and I'm thinking too much. And I know when I'm dancing and I surrender to it. Because it just washes over me. Like, it just, this whole thing washes over me and it just comes out. And I don't even really have to think. Like, all I just have to do is just move. Just let it happen. And, and that's that's when dancers look at each other and we say, just let it happen, bro. Like, just just let it happen. And because there's a state where that we reach, which is meditative and these things just start coming out, you know what I mean? And for dance, you know, people who use it therapeutically, you feel better, 
You get all these things that you have pent up. And it doesn't always have to be bad. Like, it could be good feelings, too. I remember mm. when I got the job with Acura, fucking, we were dancing in the garage. And then Cisco's like, hey, show him that new job, Buck. I was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, uh-huh. Let me show y'all this new, this new, new. <laughs> I want this new, that's new. How, right that's how, so the reason I asked you about the vlogging thing is because just like what I knew Pudge was going to bring up uh, dancing. And mm. it was like the same thing for me when I used to write graffiti. Like, I, I knew that when I had a spot that I was going to hit, like a legal spot. I would say not when I was like going out bombing and like painting the city, but like if I knew that I was going to a wall and I would have hours to spend there and just relax, <laughs> I would like make sure I had a playlist the night before. I would make sure like I would get all my paint ready and put it in my bag or like, uh you know, like my duffel or whatever I was taking. I would make sure that my paint was mixed, like my can of paint was mixed the day before. I'd make sure I have my roller. I'd make sure I have my tray. Like, I'd make sure I have everything, right? I would even like pick out the clothes that I was going to wear, like find a nice pair of jeans that was already fucked up with paint on them, put on my sneakers that I had paint all over it. And I would just like go and I would stare at the wall for like 10, 15 minutes, bro. And then I'd be like, okay, this is how I'm going to do this. This is how I'm going to do this. And then, like, most writers, they'll take, like, a can of, like, whatever paint. And then they'll, like, kind of make an etching of what they're going to do on the wall, right? And then if, like, I was going with the homie, I'd be like, okay, this is how much space I'm allotted. This is how much space you're allotted. And then <laughs> we would, like, we once we, like, allotted our spaces and everybody had their pieces that they were going to do, we'd be like, all right, bro, like, see you in a bit. And then everybody would just put their headphones in and we would just paint. And it would just mm -hmm. be like, bro, like I could, I could be listening to Miley Cyrus, and the dude next to me could have been listening to like System of a Down type shit, and we were just painting. Not that I listen to Miley Cyrus, I'm just you know like, but I'm in my own zen. He's in his yeah, own yeah, zen. yeah. And then we, uh, you know, like I would step back just to kind of see where my where my piece was at, and then I would like look over and I'm like, damn, you know, homie, like my boy over here is getting down. And then you know, and then uh, you know, like two three hours of painting would come in, and I'd get hungry, so I sit down and have a sandwich. And my boy would come and be like, how's it going? And then we would chat, and then boom, right back into our zone. And it's like it's good when you have something like that to where you could just like unplug from the world and just be right in your own little niche and have your own little fucking thing so that's why i asked you about the phone vlogging thing because i know you do phone vlogs i know you love doing this um mm. like you know, like making footage and and kind of coming back and seeing where you were where your headspace was and that so i mean i, I think that could be extremely therapeutic for you and I, I i would i would say look into that more as well but also um, meditate also meditate i, I you, would say meditate for sure yeah I definitely agree on the meditation. It's something that I've been, uh, I've thought about definitely. Um, something that you guys are like saying that I know immediately that comes to mind is photography. Um, used to be and still is, although I haven't done it as much recently, to be fair, is exactly that like thing where I look around and like I, things pop out to me in terms of like, oh, this could look sick as fuck in this like color and this lighting and this whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And there's like something in there that I can capture and it would look so fucking sick. And there's, um, I need to like start up my my Instagram again because I have so many like um, photos on there that- So stop saying you're going to do it. Of. Just do it, bro. Yeah. Matter of fact, you need to post a picture as soon as this podcast is done. Well, this is not, there's nothing that I have like around. You right just now. said you had a bunch of stuff. You literally just said you have a bunch. No, of stuff. I just I said that that like that what you're describing of like being in that zone of not really like looking into any other like media sources, not necessarily being plugged into anything, but just like your brain is figuring out the best way to do this one thing, and it's it just feels like you're you're in like some sort of zone right there like how a corpse says just like go and like it just pops out and it just happens for some reason um but i need to, i need to i need to do that again yeah it was really fun i don't know like like i said it was that and then also um running was a big thing for me mm. um it happened uh like getting out of high school um i got super into running we're like three miles a day uh and I just like I just fell in love. I still love running, but I do it more at the gym now, and I'm not as I don't, I can't do like three miles a day anymore. Um, but it's nice to just like not think about anything. Maybe I'm like listening to music, and I'm like gauging how fast I'm going. Can I go faster? Um, that's really fun to me too. Now 
running is mm-hmm. really fun to me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah, that runner is high, bro. The That's runner nice. is high, bro. And that was, you know, no doubt. I got to give her credit. I think I've shouted her out about this before, but um, Sydney could run really good. My my yeah. son's mom, he, she she could run really good when she was in high school. And she like kind of showed me some things to kind of like loosen me up up top. And, bro, once I got more comfortable running, like, bro, that runner's high was everything for a while. Because, like, I Did really started, like, running right after my dad passed away. Mm-hmm. Like, I got into running. It's such a, such a nice, like, head clearer. And also, mm-hmm. I feel like people think that runner's high think that thinks people think that runner's high is, like, you don't feel it anymore. But it's, like, a weird mode where, like, you feel it. But it doesn't matter. It's like it, it's a part of the process, and it feels really good. And if, it would feel weird if like you just like didn't feel it anymore. But it's really dude. Nice. It's like a tattoo. Running, mm, maybe. running is a mild if. And I tell people too, like, oh, you think you can handle a tattoo? How long can you run? Because if you can't run, if you can't sit there and run for an extended period of time, do not go get a tattoo. Because mm. you're going to be sitting. Well, I have there. tattoos. I can't run. <laughs> I mean, to not have stamina is one thing, but the pain in your knees that you feel or the pain in your feet that you feel. Your calves are like, fuck it. Yeah. Fire, bro. But there is. Like, once you find a certain pace, there's a certain feeling in your legs where you're like, this is normal. This is what it's it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, in crump, there's a certain feeling in your core, bro, and in the middle of your back between your shoulder blades that you feel when you first start crumping, those are those two muscles that are going to, that shit's going to hurt. And your knees, your knees are going to fucking hurt. It's funny because uh, I love tattoos, bro. But let me tell you this. I don't think I'm ever going to get my stomach finished. <laughs> Why? Is that shit hurt? Oh fucking my wanker. God. Fuck you. You don't have your stomach. Did you I say have fucking wanker? My stomach. Why haven't you done your stuff? Get your stomach. I got my ribs. I got my I got, ribs. My shit goes up to my ribs. I got my ribs. I Dang. have both my ribs. It I goes up to my ribs. ribs. Wait, I, like what's the what's the so what's the difference between here and like the stomach? What scale here? Scale here? Scale here? Like this? Yeah. Like what's this the scale? Thing? One to ten, and then one to ten. One to ten here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like a fucking three, bro. Oh, this is shit. like a three. And then what's on the stomach? Ten. Eleven. Eleven. Like, Damn. Bro, it's so bad. It, it like let's just say like this ribs are bad too ribs is probably like a nine stomach is a 10 for sure uh how this motherfucker gonna ask a question and then leave <laughs> how this motherfucker gonna ask a question and yeah then this leave? this i got two now on this side but the beak right here i saw bro. i saw that shit this shit oh let me see let me see let me see oh. I, haven't, I haven't seen the whole thing let me see it oh i got a fucking hardcore on my shelf bro god damn fucking cord yeah, that shit is sick, bro. And then yeah, then I got all these. Wait, wait, wait. What's the little skull and crossbones thing that I see on the other side? The other side, the other side. Oh, that that's uh that's Nardcore, bro. That's for the Oxnard like hardcore scene. Oh <laughs> and I don't then, think I've ever seen you have that. Uh it's relatively new. It's two years. Um the Mandalorian. I've seen that Darth, one. Darth Maul here. And then I mean I've these chest ones I've had for a long time. Yeah. Uh, my forearm tattoo, dude. My, pretty much everything, everything was about the same besides the beak. That I mean, ugh, the ribs hurt. Pain wise? Oh, I was gonna say, what the fuck? The ribs did hurt. Like the, the ribs color. hurt. You're saying that the ribs hurt just as much as your arm did? No, 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 no. no. Everything oh. else, though. I think the owl hurt way more than the prince, but the prince when it got to the top. It hurt bad. Is it, that why you don't have the top one filled in? That one I ran out of time <clears throat> and just never went back to get it filled in because it did hurt like a bitch. I was like not tempted to go back and get it filled in. Like I just but the my forearm ones, bro. I was taking like phone calls and when I got Darth Maul, like I was on the phone with somebody, like yo, yeah, I fell asleep on one of mine. One of mine I fell mm-hmm. asleep. Um, dude, I've seen those videos of those dudes getting tatted on their on their chest and they're like fucking shit is just whoa, fucking shaking. I'm like, damn, yeah, God. Bro. Jesus. Yeah, How bad is it hurt? Um, okay, let, this is the this is the way that I would say it. Imagine like uh you know like those old big pens that if you used to like um, scrape it under the desk and then touch somebody with it, it would burn them a little bit. 
What you guys the, ever used what? to do that? I've never done that. No. Yeah, you, bro. I learned so much about you today. You don't know. You didn't know the song. You didn't know the song "Too Close" by Next. You've never used a house phone before. You don't know. You've never fucking burned somebody. Wait, 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 wait. By the fucking way, I have used a. Have I used that? One? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know shit. how to use a landline ish. Okay, I've never had to use one. Anyway, but because I was I'll... super young because when they were out. Right? Exactly. Um, I would say it's like taking a hot pen, like a hot pen to your skin. Okay. That's what I would feel like. It would feel like, that's what I would explain it about. And then like after the first three minutes, you're pretty much used to it, depending on where you start. Like if you were going to get a tattoo and you were like, yo, corpse, save, where, where, where should I get my first tattoo? I'd be like, get it on your arm. Get it either here on your, on your shoulder or get mm-hmm. it like on your forearm. Oh, Easy on way. My, to- on my, on my thigh. Oh, that is good. That is cool too. That yeah, doesn't cool. hurt. Right. Yeah, I would say the thigh. I have two tattoos on my thighs. Um, uh, probably like a one, one or okay, a two. super easy then. It's not hard at all. Like it's okay. But when my, when I got my stomach done, he was like, "Where do you want me to start? Do you want me to start on the stomach and go up, or do you want me to start on the rib and go down?" And I was like, "Start on my ribs and go down," because I knew that the ribs were gonna hurt, bro. Little did I know, it was so easier easy. up in the ribs than it was in the stomach, and. I, the t- it was like four hours for the outline on my ribs and stomach, and I was just like two hours in. I was like, "Yo, I need to take a break and go smoke a cigarette." And uh, I wish I would have never done that because it hurt even more when I came back from the break. Because I like I was off, off the momentum. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you gotta stay in that zone, man. You gotta stay in the zone and just just pump through it. Pump. Yeah, I try to like listen to music, and I just it was bad. I might, I like, and here's the thing is because even, even Kelly said, like, just get the numbing stuff. But in my opinion, I've always said, if you can't sit through a tattoo, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. So, like, I, Wait, I, I personally think that if you use numbing stuff for any of your tattoos, you're like low key a pussy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because a part of the artwork is the pain. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A, a part of the artwork is the pain. Absolutely. That's why I'm like, hey, if I never get my stomach finished, then cool. At least I, at least I got it. You know what I mean. At least I got my stomach done. But I, but I do want to finish it. I'm getting kind of old. I'm getting older though. Uh, so I'm like, if I don't finish it by the time I'm like 35, then it's it'll probably just be an outline. Dude, you guys keep saying that you're old. You guys are so fucking young. You guys are so I, fucking young. Yeah. We're old compared to you, brother. No, you're not old. <laughs> but to not me. like I mean, you... like no. House no. phone wasn't even a thing for you when you were growing up. No, yeah. Is this we're grown now? That's the thing. It's not that we're old, bro. Is this we're grown now? Like, and so grown now, shit. It's like you just gotta. I don't know. You just move past certain things, or you just say, "I'm gonna do certain things now." You know. Nice. Where when you're younger, it's kind of like, ah, fuck it. You know, whatever happens, happens. Now we're kind of like. Make you got to make shit happen. Got to. Yeah, I guess that's true. You got to. Nice. Running out of time, man. That's true. Yeah, I have to piss so bad. My dad's in the bathroom, so I gotta fucking wait. I mean, well, but, we um, can close. We can close it out if you want, dog. Yeah, I gotta be up. I gotta be up early. Yeah, me too. Going to I Six Flags tomorrow. You gonna what? Oh yeah, yeah, you don't work tomorrow. Yeah, I liked. So what are you? Are you going All to Six Flags right. with your old lady or what? Uh, no, with some friends. Okay. Oh, your old lady's not invited? Damn, dog, that's fucked up. I not invited her. She's, <laughs> oh, give me a second. Give me a second. Hold on. You got to go pee pee. Oh, but since there is a move date, I got to get to San Diego and see you guys. And we all got to meet up and hang out. Oh, yeah. We got to do an in person broadcast. What happened? We got to do an in person broadcast. Bro, yeah, yes. Four bounce. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Before November, oh mm. fuck. And then we need to talk about the um, when we're going to do everything, especially the time difference. We probably have to do it a little bit sooner, I'd imagine. Or, I mean, I don't know about maybe oh, weekends. Shit. We can just move to a weekend for a little bit. Mm. We I, I don't know. Weekends are tough. Um, How are we going to be the usual Tuesdays yeah, and dream say. on the weekend? It'll be for a little bit <laughs> because <laughs> the real oh, this I don't want to talk about yet because it's not in stone. Okay, don't um, talk about it yet, though. But we'll figure it out. We still have till November. We have plenty of time. But we do and, have to set up a in-person. Yes. Yeah, we'll and, set that up. And because here's I the thing be, is... 
I may be able to still, I may be able to still to maintain the Tuesdays, same time, same everything. I just got to see how this, how I got to let some of the chips fall first before I make any plans. Yeah. So here, so here's my question, and we can talk about this a little bit on the stream. Is there a? We would have to get a way to get three cameras. First of all, we'd have to find a place to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And a computer to do it on. Mm -hmm. Different monitors for us to like have each of one of our communities. And like three different cameras set up in a similar area where we would just like sit around the table so that and set up the microphones. I mean, unless do you have a laptop, Zero? Yeah, I was gonna say, I it's probably best to just record it instead of live streaming. I feel like it'd be way yeah, too difficult. To I, live think, stream I it. think recording it instead of a live because three streams we would need like so either so much data on our phones or an internet access that would be like crazy for to uphold. No, because if you got like we could just do it at my crib or something. Oh, I still don't think the, the internet infrastructure alone, I don't think, would be able to handle it. What do you mean, baby? It's it is, not well, a thousand it, gigs. Come well, because it is, but I mean, I have is, a gig. It is, it is a, I don't know, maybe. We'll maybe a gig is a gig is a good, good amount, good amount. But I don't four, know what the whole three streams. live streams. Yeah, three live streams over like what That's nine true. different fucking platforms. That's true. That is true. We would probably have to record it. It'd probably be just, yeah, easier overall, too. We all get a copy. Could we go live in the Discord? Um, we could go live in the Discord. With yeah. the video? We Possibly. could go live in the Discord. We could go live in the Discord and and have it recorded. <laughs> and then like Zero could edit it down a little bit. Not too much, but just like the pauses and shit. And then we could put it out on on all of our YouTubes. Mm -hmm. oh, and then I would put it on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. We could do it like that. That would be sick, actually. I'll be sick as fuck. Oh, we'll iron imagine. that out. We'll iron yeah, that out. Yeah, but that would be yeah. sick. We'd have to do it like in the summertime or something. Yeah. Man, you almost... I'm going to tell you, Zero, you almost had me, bro. I think your mission you know? should be to get me to cry on stream since I'm the only one who hasn't done it yet. But you almost had me. Talking about my mom and talking about death, you almost fucking had me. Let me be real. Show me a video yeah. of like an army dad coming home and I, I'll start bawling, bro. <laughs> Dog. Those those videos are fucking sad, especially when they have like dogs oh, yeah. and the dogs are crying. I'm like, bro, yeah, when they're all oh, whimpering, yeah, those get me, bro. Or the uh, or the ones that like they are out on the street and they like bless a single mom. Oh, bro, that was. Mm. Ones. Oh no, you know which ones get me the worst? The uh, have you ever seen the guy that stands like blindfolded and he holds the sign that says like, if you're going through a hard time, you can give me a hug type of thing oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, bro and when they hug him and he says like i love you to them and he the, then they just like let loose like i lost my dad yesterday you know like all that type of shit oh those ones get me bro i'm like mm -hmm. yeah so, so that's why I, that's why i spend so much time on uh tiktok <laughs> <laughs> that's why i spend so much time on tiktok all right zero well, hey close it out brother since it was your night man great topics though the ex girlfriend thing, the, or the exes being friends thing, though that that one was a that was a little bit of a doozy. Let me tell I you, I was about to get hairy. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad it, it worked out pretty well. It worked out as as well as I thought it it, it could, to be quite honest. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. listen, wait, who's next week? Corpse, right? You, yeah. Oh, you, wait. Oh, it is me next week. Mm -hmm. All right, I will. I'll give you guys, and I I'll give. I'll just put this out in the world. Um, I and I said it in our text message earlier, and I wanted to say because people are listening right now. But um, we've been like really sad a lot lately, like yeah. with our with <laughs> our podcast and the top the topics that we bring up are typically serious, which is not bad. I mean, that's the kind of route that our uh that our our show is going, uh, which is not a bad thing because we talk about shit that's going on in real life, shit that's going on with ourselves, and being three men and things of that nature but i i do want and maybe i'll make it next week but i do want one of our weeks to be like lighthearted and fun the whole time where we're fucking cracking jokes and just giving each other a hard time and really just letting loose instead of digging deep within ourselves um so i, I since it's my week i'm gonna try and find something i can't promise that it's not gonna be that, that it'll be lighthearted but I'm, I'm gonna do my best next week to kind of touch and preface on something that's that's fun and that we can 
joke around with because I, I don't I, as much as people watch us I think that they see that we joke around a little bit and but they usually see us more on the serious side so I, I do want that for for the people uh, that do watch us in our communities look at Pudge he's for the past almost month right it's just been like serious we but we've talked about death for three weeks yeah grief yeah grief got deep grief dude grief. That, that was, was a, a long one it was weird that like all <laughs> well me and corpse had the had the grief thing and then save you brought it in crazy good mm-hmm. um and then we just carried it through. like it, it carried us for a minute which was yeah good. so bo- and both of you guys got uh we, both of you guys were able to bring up the grief topics that you wanted to because we didn't really touch on those topics so it was nice that we had we had three weeks worth of grief if you mm-hmm. think about it yeah because mm-hmm. i w- mine was the, if you brought somebody back corpses was the how do we deal with grief right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then yours was uh w- death the whole situation with death and wow what does it feel had, like uh, yeah crazy. wow we had three weeks of death and grief wow and cool. this is why podcasts are important and this is why it's important to sit down with people and fucking talk because sometimes you're not going to get the conversation off in the first fucking 15 minutes imagine if these imagine if these fucking podcasts were 15 minutes boys you feel me? Like we sit here and do three fucking hours. Like imagine if it was five minutes, but guys, like, like, like political pundits and dudes who can't hold a conversation for longer than their fucking attention span allows them. You know what I mean? And we come here and we come here week after fucking week and we hash out some fucking topics for two to three hours. And sometimes it takes nine hours. And this is great. Yeah. It's fucking great, dude. And we agree with their, with each other. We disagree. Some people have, th- some of us have thought different things because of something else that somebody else has brought up. Like it's a beautiful fucking thing we have, bro. It's mm-hmm. a beautiful. This is so beautiful. It's so beautiful the way that this just came about and was like, it's fuck. It's dope. Yeah. Corpse is Corpse is about to back his ass He's up general, all the way to bed. That's why ain't nothing stopping the podcast, boys. I don't care where I go. Dude, I need this. It is so fucking good. So let me ask, wait, hold on, real quick, real important question: Is that shirt available on the website right now? It is. Okay, because I'm gonna need me one of those, bro. Because that shit is that shit is actually fuego. Thank you. (laughs) But you know what I'm mad about? You know what I am mad about? Those Hmm. hats haven't been available for a long ass fucking time, and I still don't have one. Oh, because because that motherfucker is old. This and for the re- and I only have I only have one of these now, I only have one of these. By the way, I, ha- I, I had, had a black, I had a black one, that one got stolen. I have a I had a red one came off on a roller coaster and they wouldn't give it back to me. And now Bruh. I only have this one. It sounds like you're being irresponsible. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's what that sounds like to me. But I got a plethora of these. Let me tell you, bro. I could wear one a week if I or one every day for the week. I'm gonna have that to is a really sick design, though. I like that. Thanks, bro. Bro, we we worked our fucking ass off on this one. It was nice. Shout out to the fucking designer, though, that made the shit. He fucking... My man, Faith. Art he, of Faith. He went off, bro. He killed that shit. Yeah. At gmail.com. And I was like, low-key being picky, and I was like, yo, can we make it like this? And Corpse was like, yeah, like, let me just tell him. And I, I felt weird. But it was like our baby that we were making together you know and it was just like i don't know if you i don't know if you guys follow me on instagram uh but i like posted like a plethora of pictures of people wearing this shit and it's killer bro i i I, yeah i have always if i can plug faith jermaine whitmore you can find him on instagram art of faith he is an amazing artist and he is very delicate with your requests and he's very straightforward with his pricing. Um, there has never been a project that I've went to him for that I did not. I mean, I just was not satisfied with. Um, this shirt in particular was a design. He came to me about um, a little project idea that he had where he's like, hey, man, I'll actually come up with ideas for you. For you. you just pay a month, like a monthly subscription. That's exactly what I did. And this was the first design he sent. I said, son, you can take all my money <laughs> I you can fire, bro. sign yeah, I me fire. the fuck up and he would just come back to me month after month and be like hey i have this idea let's hear it 
Yeah, whatever. What I don't know if you have it on the website. I might have to check right now. But the the one that you sent me with just a circle with the skull and it says corpse collection around it, mm-hmm. bro. That that is simple, but fucking. Mm, I it's in my closet. That was another one. That was another oh, one. He's like, hey man. He's like, I got some. It's kind of simple though. I was like, just matter of fact, let me see it, Faith. I was like, just let me see the fucking thing, man. It's like, I just trust him, bro. Like, and especially like, yeah, this is my brand. This is corpse collection. Like it's, it's everything that I represent. You know what I mean? I, I just, I got this one. I got the Frank T. Mm-hmm. I got the Frank T. Oh, damn. You got, you got, you got our piece on the front cover of the KX collection, bro. Wait, let me find out. And got my man LeVar right there. You know what I'm saying? Representing. Yeah. I was about to say, let me find out you put this back on the website and nobody knows about it. But you no. Took it off. No. No, I gave that one to you. I told yeah, you yeah I know. I thought you were going to put it back on. I was like, mm-hmm. let me find out you got this back on here. Let me mm-hmm. find out you got this back on here. But yeah. Um. All right. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, Zero. Close it out. I'm going to go browse this fucking. I got this Dark Mark Part X. Damn, $20 for that? Oh, bro. <gasps> What? <laughs> what <is> <laughs> All right, listen, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Save. Thank you, Corpse. Everybody in uh, individuals, community, um, coming together. Beautiful thing, like Save said. Uh, it's been an amazing usual Tuesday as usual. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for listening to the topic and all the um, amazing words that were said today. Um, yeah, uh, you can find me at 0% on YouTube. That's kind of the main thing. Typically live Monday, Tuesday, obviously, and Wednesday. Um, yeah, go off, go off, guys. It's all you. My guys, this is <clears throat> Big Corpse, the one and only. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you guys again, always for a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. Um, I'm trying to do better about doing a little closeout with something you know, a little, little inspirational. And so I have this, I actually heard this online and I fucking love this. This is Jeremiah 41 10. And it says, do not fear. I am with you. Do not be anxious because I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Yes. All shall be put to shame and disgrace who vent their anger against you. Those shall be as nothing and perish who offer resistance. Ye shall seek, but not find. Those who strive against you, they shall be as nothing at all who do battle with you. For I am your God. That was I like that. Um, all right. Hey, uh, to Zero's community, thank you so much. Corpus community, thank you guys so much. My community, as always, fuck you guys. I love y'all. Um, no, I'm just playing. But uh, hey, that was the usual Tuesdays. We will be back. Wait, are we doing Tuesday next week, guys? Are we all on board for Tuesday next week? I, I think Tuesday is usual, yes. I'm yes. good. Corpse. I should All be right. fine. We will be back next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Probably 8.15, honestly, on Tuesdays because I have peanut until his mom picks him up. Um, but next week, um, beautiful show. Show 10. Thank you, guys. We wouldn't be doing this without you guys. Um, so I'm out of here. You can find me on at Save Wonder. Oh, shit. I just looked at my little thing right here, and it Saver. says Saver. What? Um, you can find me on Save Wonder on Instagram, the Save Wonder <laughs> on Twitter. Now we are back on Twitter. I gotta get my following back up, baby. I gotta follow um, you. I gotta be. I gotta get on my Twitter shit. I gotta be like corpse. Uh, but we're back on Twitter. Don't post me. Don't tag me in no hoe shit either. Okay, we ain't in it for the hoes. We in it for the quotes. Uh, but as all <laughs> for the memes. For the memes. Uh, but as always, you guys stay healthy, stay happy. I love you guys. Keep smiling. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Until next time. Be safe, guys. Be safe. Be safe. All right, boys. You guys take care. All right. right, Be safe, guys. Love y'all. Bye-bye.